The following program is brought to you by your friends at Podcast One. First, there's Geico. Do you own? Do you rent? Well, you do one or the other, right? You know, it's hard work out there. Owning, renting. You want to save some money? How about your bundle? Bundle your policies at Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle the homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you got so much to do already. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. See just how much you could save at Geico. That is Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. LifeLock fraudsters posing as IRS agents, police officers, or power companies are tricking victims into sending online gift cards or reading gift card numbers over the phone as payment. It's important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft are affecting our lives. Every day we put our info at risk on the Internet. In an instant, cyber criminals could harm your finances, credit, and your reputation. Good thing there's LifeLock. LifeLock helps detect a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web. If they detect your information has potentially been compromised, they will send you an alert. Protect yourself with LifeLock. Right, Dawson? No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But you can keep what's yours with LifeLock by Norton. Join now and save up to 25% off your first year by using promo code ADAM. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head to LifeLock.com and use promo code ADAM for 25% off. Hello and welcome back to Corolla Classics for Saturday, December 26, 2020. You know how the show goes. We're going to play some clips from the 11 plus years of podcasting under Adam Corolla's belt. we got a lot to choose from and we have an incredible show for you today. My name is Chris Loxamana, executive producer of the Adam Corolla Show. And with me, as always, Corolla archivist, super fan Giovanni. It's the day after Christmas. I hope you didn't get everything on your list. Otherwise, you're probably pretty bummed out. Yeah, other, but it doesn't matter because we have a gift of a show. Just yeah. like yesterday. Yeah, just like yesterday. So let's kick it off with a clip from June of 2013. And this is uh, probably the most signature or one of the most signature laughs that have got, come in through the Corolla sphere. Um, it became a bald Brian drop. I think his and Maria Menounos' laugh are are instant drops, and they're they're both hilarious and charming and recognizable. Yeah. So, but I'm, what I'm talking about is Seth Rogen. He came in with Evan Goldberg back in 2013. Adam Kroll Show 1095. Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg making their triumphant return to the ACS. Seth famously guested on Love Line twice, uh, once to save freaks and geeks, uh, the other time to launch the second show he did. Undeclared. Also, it was on Fox. It was a sitcom, and he was more involved with that. There are two classic Love Line episodes, and then he didn't come on the morning show. And then all of a sudden, 2013, we get Adam Kroll and Seth Rogen again. One of Earth's most enviable bromances, uh, the writing partners of Evan and Seth. This episode has Alison Rose and Brian Bishop. It's from June of 2013, and they're promoting the fantastic movie, This is the End. Check it out. Yeah, Seth's got his man, Greer. I do. It's he, delicious. He got the little brose, the 50-50 mix. <laughs> Seth Rogen in studio. This is the end uh, in theaters Wednesday. This uh, next Wednesday. Well, I guess that's this Wednesday, June 12th. Yes. Really enjoyed the movie. Really enjoyed the twist or at least the sort of cool twist that everyone was playing everyone's. Selves. own character but with with a little twist to it i'm sure yeah, uh, at times a pretty big twist <laughs> a very um, michael sarah twist. yeah for sure yeah he's not a coked out sexual deviant in real life no I but it was of. really really <laughs> fun and uh i've checked out on rotten tomatoes uh today i and this is uh as of friday it was uh i don't know 94 with the critics 100 with the top critics like insane it's reviews. crazy. Yeah, so far. It's really nice. Because <laughs> I've had movies that have really bad reviews, so it's really, <laughs> sometimes it's, it's nice to get good ones. Yeah, I would say to everybody, uh, rip a bong load and go see this movie. Definitely. You'll enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah. Eat an edible, maybe. Ooh. Keep you going for yeah. the whole thing a little yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. Or both, if you're so inclined. No, I, <laughs> I did that with Sex in the City. I 
It's a classic it, stoner movie. It's it is. It seems insane, but it I did, and then someone from TMZ jumped out of a bush at me, and then it freaked me out. That and would be too much. It was too much, and it was opening night. It was <laughs> it was a Wednesday. It was my birthday. It's a very long story. I won't get into it. Did but, you like the movie? Um, I I found that being super super stoned and watching it from the front row in a full house <laughs> was really. Bizarre. That like, would be it bizarre. Made it, it made it fun for me, and I had this one moment, which was really weird. Which is like at a certain point, one of the gals, you know, Miranda said to the other one, where I was like, "I am woman, hear me roar!" And the whole audience, which was just mostly gay men and middle aged women, <laughs> and then me and Jimmy Kimmel went like, "Wow!" And, and they all went nuts, and I from the front row went, "Zip it!" And everyone <laughs> shut up, and I was like, yeah, I guess we know who's still in charge. Here, don't we? <laughs> You're but that the was, old man. That was just theater. me being stoned. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let, so the, the, the movies, I don't want to give away too much. It's, a, it's, a, it's apocalyptic. Oh, you can, eh, you can check out the TMZ. Eh, we got the video if you want to. <laughs> this is uh, me super stoned uh, walking out of uh, – I mean, this is, the, this is the first opening day of – Sex in the City? Two. Two, nonetheless. Yeah, two. <laughs> I was going to ask you, how was Sex in the City? Awesome. <laughs> awesome? <laughs> First one was great. But That's the second great. one was great. Oh, yeah. I thought you guys were going to go see, you're gonna go see <laughs> Kick-Ass or something like that. No <laughs> way. No? <laughs> Sex in the City, huh? Sarah Jessica Parker and Kick-Ass? Uh, no. Well, then, no can too. Uh, <laughs> so high am. Jessica Parker, by the way. Yeah. She's Awesome. So it's great, huh? oh, I, well, Are you even aware yeah. that Jimmy's not with you anymore? I don't Jimmy know where Jimmy away. went. <laughs> Jimmy hid. He got stuck in the back looking at a photo or something. No, no. We always see these movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're holding your shirt. I'm, I'm right holding on. it, right? Yeah. Well, I, it's been three hours since yeah. I've been yeah. hot. But it's still really hot. How was Sex in the City? Did you like it? Listen, Cam and a couple of guys have a gay experience together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get it. He had it. time to think of a joke. You got time to think of a joke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a good 40 seconds on you. Yeah. So uh, I enjoyed the movie thoroughly, and I wasn't even high. But uh, <laughs> See it high next time. Yes. That's, well, I, then I'll get to enjoy it from a whole new set of exactly. eyes. <laughs> so, so can you, it, just for people who want to know what the movie's about, I know, without giving too much away, can you just sort of, in a couple sentences, explain what it's about? Uh, yeah, it's about me and Jay uh, Baruchel, um, who plays Jay Baruchel, are like good friends from growing up, and he comes to visit me in L.A., and uh, he doesn't really like my new friends is kind of the story, and I make him go to this party at James Franco's house, who's one of my new friends, and basically there's a lot of famous people there, and while we're all partying, the apocalypse happens, and a lot of the people die, and the surviving people, like, barricade themselves in a house and have to kind of deal with each other's personal issues and try surviving and kind of figure out just what the hell is going on in general, basically. Uh, Michael Sarah's demise is not to be missed. No, that, it's pretty spectacular. That is pretty spectacular. <laughs> we right? kill his little ass. Yeah, but it's done in a, in a very graphic but satisfying uh, it's true. way. And uh, and it's nice to see L.A. burn to the ground. It really, really satisfying. It really is. So, so are, are you out? You're in L.A. full time or are you? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I have a place in Vancouver, but I live mostly. Oh, just got back from Vancouver. It's lovely, isn't oh, it? Oh, my God, is it lovely. Where did you stay? <sighs> I was so high and so <laughs> drunk the entire time it was for Jimmy's bachelor party yeah. <laughs> that I I can figure it out. Can well, figure their out. assistant will figure out what where, part where of I town stay. Was it? There was water. The bike riding district? Around, it was the Opus Hotel is oh, where, is where we stayed. Yeah, I, have an, I live right near there. Yeah, great. Yeah. Just, you just walk around everywhere. It's a lovely area. And it's so insane because, like, I walked in I, – I, Everyone else went to bed at like you know six a.m. But yeah. it, uh, but the first night I passed out at like twelve thirty or something. So I found myself in the position of being up at eight thirty while everyone else had <laughs> been sleeping for two hours. You enjoyed so, your day. So I got up and started walking around looking for hangover remedies, and I went into some juice bar. And the guy was just behind the counter. And you know, you're from L.A. You're used to the steely-eyed foreigner going, "You go home." <laughs> no, you know, when you come all. in there, and this guy's like, "Hey, y'all, hey, how you doing?" <laughs> He's probably some super big guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's big guy, and he's sitting there, and he's just sitting behind the counter. He's like, "How you doing?" And I'm like, "Good." And he's, "I see you on O'Reilly." And I said, "Okay." And I said, 
I'm hungover. What do you What do you got? And he said, I got a hangover remedy. Yeah. <laughs> and and he then, gave it to you? Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, wheat, wheat grass nice. and then like potassium and banana and all that shit. And he's like, hey. And then we just start talking and stuff. And I just realized just a bunch of friendly people. People who are good looking. Oh, we're all very. Handsome. They're all well. Them throw you out for those yeah. reasons. No, everyone's just super baked in Vancouver and stoned all the time. So everyone's very friendly and sociable. It's like a big weed. Scene. Well, that was yeah. uh, was one of the things we were discussing because when we were going to the airport, uh, Jeff Ross was like, "We should get baked before we go to the airport." Yeah. And then somebody said, "Nah, we don't want to smell like weed." In the airport, and then someone else says, everyone here smells like weed all the time. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's definitely true. I guess that's why you eat it. But yeah. but I, they're super mellow, happy, friendly, let's party yeah. people. And I don't know, is that, that's Vancouver. That's not all of Canada. Right? Um, it, it, every city kind of has its own identity. Of I didn't get cities. that in Winnipeg. No, Winnipeg's not quite like that. Toronto even is like a little more of a big city. Montreal mm-hmm. has like French Canadian, so mm-hmm. that adds like a whole other thing to that city. You know, Vancouver's definitely like a unique city in Canada. Where Where did you grow up in Canada? In Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, you guys ever do that? I can't. I, I, I can't imagine because do you guys ever do that thing when you're traveling? And you're just going around somewhere. And you'll go to like, um, well, let's say you go to Pebble Beach, and you're just driving through some beautiful stretch of highway, and you'll pass a high school, like Pebble Beach oh. High School, and you'll go, yes. "That's a private. I mean, that's a public school. That's yeah. just Pebble Beach yeah. High School." And then you go, "What would it be like going to, go to school yeah. here? Yeah. That'd be insane, right?" I did the same thing driving through St. Helena Wine Country in Napa. And there's yeah. a gorgeous public high school. It's right there on like Highway 29. It's like. These kids are in school. They're going to get out of school and no, go I, home. I, yeah, and right. I know a so guy who grew, grew up there, and he said it was as nice as you would think. But when I think about growing up in Vancouver, it's like growing up in the Matterhorn at Disneyland or something. <laughs> like, wh- What happens when you get out of that place? Uh, or it how was really is fun. It? it was really fun. Um, it kind of felt like a movie. Like when I explain it to people who – Went to American high schools. It that a lot of them are, kind of, like we had a lot of freedom. You could leave. A lot of people in American high schools you can't even leave anymore. Like they only leave the campus. We could. We had a lot of freedom. You can go wherever you want. We smoked tons of weed all the time. <laughs> uh, there was a lot. We grew up like in a big city, so like there was just tons of restaurants. There were tons of parties. You the drinking age is nineteen. So like from the age of like sixteen, you could buy alcohol what, pretty easily. What did your parents do? Uh, my mom was a social worker, mm-hmm. and my dad worked for like nonprofit organizations. So basically. not a lot of dough floating around. No, not that much. <laughs> but not a whole lot of judging either. No, very open minded and supportive. Of, right, and uh, you yeah. you got going creatively. Well, first off, I don't know how old are you now. Thirty. I probably don't have to say now. 30, 30, How 30. old are you in the future? I'm th- <laughs> I actually don't know. I'm 30, I think. 30. When, okay. When's your birthday? April 15th, 1982. Are we 30? Yeah. 31. Yeah, 31. Okay, 31. Man, I'm 31. No, I have, I have that. I have that every once yeah, in a while. I have that every once But with your age, I'm not yeah. retarded. <laughs> no. You're 31. I feel like you've done 20 films. And yeah. uh, you started in this incredible eight. I mean, the hardest thing in the world to, to break into is sort of the theatrical mm. whatever. I mean, you can do reality shows when you're yes. 19 <laughs> or almost any age. You can do gay porn at almost any age. That's how I got my dick in the that's, door. <laughs> <laughs> got your bag card. Exactly. Um, but uh, doing comedy usually takes a while. Some stand-up, yeah. a little stint on the ground. You know, with the I ground did, I did all, all that. Stuff. I just started really young. So like, you were doing stand-up at 15, 16, whatever? 13, I started doing stand-up. Like, in clubs. Like, I would go <laughs> out and I would perform at nightclubs. I got, like, uh, I got up one night at, like, an open mic, and then I started getting invited around. I was, like, okay at it. And I did that all throughout high school from when I was, like, 13 to, like, 19, basically. And then when... Was the big break and what brought you over here? Um, I threw stand up. I got an agent, and meanwhile, that whole time, me and Evan were writing super bad, like mm-hmm. as a movie. And so, uh, I I did stand up, and I got an agent. And then when I, when I was seventeen, I got cast on Freaks and Geeks uh, through right. stand up comedy, and that and I've literally worked with the same people ever since then. Like. It's literally like James Franco, Jason Siegel, Judd. Like, I mean, it's it's all the same people I still work with, basically, or the ones I met when I was, you know, 16 years old. Does, uh, I've said this a million times. I always feel like when I meet people 
that should be assholes, like wildly successful <laughs> young comedians or super hot blondes. And they turn out or not both to, in this case. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was folding Sometimes it in. You can have it all. <laughs> and they're super friendly and laid back. They're always from Canada. And then I go that that ex- that explains it. <laughs> Me and Pamela Anderson, right? Yeah. <laughs> are are you? Uh, this is a weird question. Are you as happy as you you seem to be? Uh, usually, I mean, there's a lot of stress at times that goes mm-hmm. along with. Well, when you're directing a movie that you wrote or co-directing or whatever, yeah. you, there's a lot of like, hey, people were losing the daylight. Would you fucking do yeah. it the way I told you to do it the that's first time? That's not that bad. Directing a movie's not bad. Producing a movie is a, is a nightmare, as I was just saying. That's like what's really a pain in the ass. And like doing all, you know, getting them to get you the money is really hard and stressful. Spending the money is easy. That's like the making right. of the movie. And then making sure they sell the movie properly is very stressful. And you just have to, there's just a lot of things, a lot of TV spots. You got to make sure they're good. You're getting reviews. You just have to make sure your tracking is good and your internet presence is good. I mean, that's the stuff that's like really stressful. It's the most stressful because you really can't even control it that much. You know, you just kind of have to watch it. And the movie, I don't know what the budget was, but a lot of, you know, effects and L.A.'s burning and it wasn't your basic, you know, it wasn't super bad in terms of super bad at a big cast and didn't look cheap, but it didn't have a bunch of special effects and things yeah. like that in it. It wasn't that much more expensive than really? super bad. No, it was actually cheaper. Yeah, than- but still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, now we're even. Exactly. But uh, it was, yeah, I mean, we used our effects money wisely, I think. Oh, and I yeah. guess the the way the computers work. It's cheaper now to do effects. It's a lot faster and easier to do it it's just sort of like animation people i brought up when you bring up animation to people they're like oh jesus christ we don't have a year lead time and they got to go to korea and stuff like that and it's like now nah, it's russian it's computer it's yeah exactly. next week it's like you don't know what animation is now everyone's sort of living in the simpsons in 1999 no it's true like you can do a lot of this stuff like on a laptop like that you it, would do that took like ilm like months to like like you could make those jurassic park dinosaurs like a nerd could do that on like his ipad probably now you know is it for you is is it just one project just dovetailing into the next? I mean, are you beginning the next project as you're w- wrapping up the last? Or- yeah, pretty much. We've already filmed a movie since this is the end, and we start pre-production on the next movie we're directing at the end of July, basically. And for you, do you go, I want to carve some time out so I don't go insane? Or do you have this, I got to make hay while the sun shines? Uh, and do you have a bunch of people around you that are getting you to do a bunch of shit you don't want to do because you want to rest and you really resent them? Uh, not so much anymore. I think there was a time when I kind of really uh, probably did more than I should have a few years ago, maybe maybe four or five years ago or something like that. Now I feel like maybe uh, even more recently than that. But now I feel like, uh, you know, there's a few things that we really like and – the last movie we filmed in L.A., so it wasn't bad at all. And, like, the next movie we're filming in Vancouver. Like, uh, filming movies isn't that bad sometimes also. Like, it doesn't take up that much time and energy always, you know. Um, but the next one we do will. But, I mean, we enjoy it. it it's fun. And I get, like, a month off in July, do you, basically. Do, so. you, <laughs> do you always – or not always, but do you attempt to sort of work with the same crowd and the same crew and the same folks and yeah, we have keep it like, copacetic? Yeah, we have, like, the like our AD that we love. Like and like this DP that did this is the end of the last movie we did also and is probably gonna do the next movie that we do like and we have like our friends literally from high school are like our executive producers who are also writers that we work with all the time um, yeah we have like and like our DVD guys are guys that we're friends with like the guys that shoot the behind the scenes stuff are guys that we've known like for like ten years who are our good friends yeah like a lot of our friends work on the movie how are your parents doing with you being a billionaire <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not one but right would be but fantastic. but money <laughs> was money evil growing up I mean no not at all they just we didn't have a lot of money but we, again we weren't one of those families that like. You know, I think, like, when you don't grow up with a lot of money, you go, like, one of two ways. It's like you either really are stressed out about money your whole life Mm -hmm. and have, like, a high value for it, or you kind of don't worry about money that much because Mm -hmm. you're taught that it's not that important, basically. Right. And I think I went that way a little bit more. Not very important. Yeah. 
I know I hate I hate the people that go. There were seven of us, of us living in one bedroom, but we didn't know we were poor. I was like, yeah. "Fuck you!" You know why yeah. we weren't poor? Because we had music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had a nice. We were middle class, and I knew we weren't rich. <laughs> right. I fucking knew we were poor, and I hated yeah. it. Exactly. I could use some air conditioning. I didn't have a car in high school. All my friends yeah. did. Yeah. But, I was aware of that. But, but your parents did kind of intentionally. Obviously, they're intelligent people. They're Jews, after all. Yes, exactly. And they Very. went. They went this direction where they said instead of chasing a buck we will try to give something back to society exactly so they, they went that it's route true. yeah and there's a part of them and I, again i don't want to graft my own shit onto you but my family kind of went that direction too and yeah. then later on when you start making a buck they give you the what well, can't buy you happiness kind of move. Have you gotten that one yet, or are they just totally thrilled for you and and all the dough you're raking uh, in? They're really happy, but I think because personal, like I'm married, I have like a nice, you know, like I have a very my personal life is is also very well adjusted. I think in a mm-hmm. lot of ways, um, I've been with the same woman for like almost ten years now. So like I think I think they see that. I'm also, you know, I think if I was like a heroin addict, but I had lots mm-hmm. of money. But like, I think they see like I'm pretty, you know, like they did a good job. Stable. Yes, my personal yeah. life is going well. I'm. Have, have you helped them out? Evan is here, uh, by nice. the way. Evan Goldberg. Good yeah. To see Evan. Nice. Oh. Have I helped out my parents? Yeah, definitely. I bought them a house and then uh, cars and all sorts of stuff. Do you, do you have, uh, do you have uh, brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have an older sister. Is she bitchy about your money? No, actually, she's super Please. cool. What's going on? <laughs> What's, no, she's actually really uh, – she's nice. She's great. She's happy. I paid off her student uh, her student loans. I know. <laughs> and you couldn't have got a fucking card for Christmas? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Did she get you a Christmas card No, she actually comes down. She has nephews now, and she – like knows that I'm super busy and she like comes down all the time with them and brings them to visit. So uh-huh. uh, like I'm around in their lives and she, it's not like she gives me a lot of shit for not constantly going back wow. to Vancouver and visiting, which Evan, is very nice. Please tell me there's somebody in your family that resents your success or the, my, my whole family. Oh, your whole family. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Everyone in like. his family. And, and Seth's sister doesn't like that. I work with him. No one, no one likes that I'm around. <laughs> so you guys, are there a lot of Jews in uh, Vancouver? No, I didn't spot not. a lot of them. There's, no, you there's only enough that they clump together. Yeah, we it's like all, that perfect uh, balance. All uh-huh. Jews know each other in Vancouver. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. So you guys grew – you met at a – did you meet at a bar mitzvah? We met at a bar mitzvah class, yeah. Ooh, Jewier. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Jewiest <laughs> way you <laughs> met. Other than being circumcised together, that, that, that's the Jewiest okay, He way. literally went to Jew day school and I went to Jew after school and we would meet in passing. Yeah, like we would cross wow. Jew paths. <laughs> and – and did you just immediately have that rapport? I mean, did you sort of – I mean, I knew – I when I met Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. he, he and I were like simpatico yeah. in the Gentile department. Like, we are like, <laughs> exactly. here's a non-Jew. I could definitely bounce some ideas off yeah, of. Yeah, it was that kind of thing. And because we were in bar mitzvah class together, we – you go to all the bar mitzvahs of the people in your class, which is like 30 or 40 – Jews. Mm-hmm. So um, so we went to like 30 or 40 bar and bat mitzvahs together throughout that year. So almost every weekend we're at a party together. Trying to get beer uh, from behind the bar. Yeah, just trying sure. to steal beer and, so, and talking and slowly realizing that we're probably not going to be cool in high school. Yeah, slowly <laughs> not getting yeah. girls to dance with us and exactly. not making out with girls. And that, and that we were going to high school together So and with our third friend, Fogel, who we're still friends with. But <laughs> um, like we slowly realize, like, oh, we're all going to be losers together, and so let's all become friends, basically. And Smart. Going yeah, to yeah. high school, all we had was like, "Are you a Jew?" Sure. sure. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a Jew. We made all a right. little Jewish crew in high school. Yeah. And you guys started writing just early on. Was there any other endeavors? Was anyone in the band? Did anyone no. on we, the track team? I was on the improv team. I did they like, have an improv tra- team? And, yeah, we had like an improv team. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And this did. is regular public high school? Yeah, regular public so high so school. They're so much better than we are, the Canadians. It's a lot better. I guess. I'm not going to pretend our schools aren't way better. Yeah. Oh, my God. You had an improv team. We had a donkey squad. I just had to go stay in the donkey squad. Get in the donkey squad, Corolla. And get minus points. And we, but it was awesome. It'd be like, that's three off, Corolla. For what? That's five off, Corolla. Corolla. What? I didn't do anything, Mr. Waller. That's 10 off. And back to the corral. You went to school in the Wonder Years. Yeah. I really would get yelled at to go sit in the donkey squad. Which was what? Um, Mr. Walters had a group he called the donkeys. Those were the, those were the kids. Those were the troublemakers in mm. P.E. 
where <laughs> I I would come out wearing blue jeans and like he, from Pinocchio. Is that what yeah? It was almost like that. Lampwick. I think that was him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would smoke cigars and go, yeah, say. <laughs> and he, like he'd say to me, I'd come out in jeans, you know, and he'd go, Corolla, go put shorts on and get back in line. And I'd run back in the locker room and I'd come out with the shorts on, pulled over my jeans, and <laughs> then he'd go, classic donkey. I behavior. thought that was pretty funny. You are being a donkey. And now he's <laughs> like, that's ten points off, donkey. And I, <laughs> And, yeah, and if you argued, they just kept going, and you'd have to go to the corral, which was the benches set up in a square with all the other donkeys. We, we donkey. didn't get a cool name or a squad. We were just two losers who sucked at gym yeah, class. Yeah, we were just idiots. <laughs> I, I, have fa- a I failed gym class in high school. Uh, what really? was your least favorite gym activity? Six-lap run. Six-lap run. Ugh. Every every other month, you had to do a six lap run, which and we we would we would walk it, but move our upper bodies like <laughs> yeah, we were running. We realized if you like kind of bounced your whole upper body, <laughs> yeah. it would look like you were running. Rogan's titties are jiggling; he must exactly. be moving. He must be moving. <laughs> He's <laughs> lactating too; he must be yeah. moving. No, there's he, actually he, he dug a deeper hole. It and didn't there's help. a joke in Superbad that's basically based on that, where, where Jonah can't run as fast as the other boys, and the kid with no leg passes him in the six <laughs> lap run. Did they give you? <laughs> Uh, time that they needed you to complete the six lapper in? If you completed it in about 10 minutes, you were amazing. Yeah. 12 minutes, you're normal. And we were like 19, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. so like, like, like losers. But you had to complete it, and I just stopped doing it. I was like, this is stupid. But if you like, didn't why? complete, you couldn't get your passing grade to yeah, graduate. Which is why I failed gym class one year. <laughs> so, but you guys, did you know, or did you, like, there's some people that go, look, um, fat. To the six lap run, <laughs> they say fat to, we said to fat. this lap run, this this run of laps. They say fat to this, and they know there's something else waiting for them. Yes, there's comedy, there's yeah. improv, there's writing, there's yeah. movies, there's Hollywood, and then there's people like me who say fat to these things. But carpet cleaning was waiting. For me. <laughs> you know, like there was nothing waiting. I still said fuck it. Did you guys know something was I, waiting I around? I knew the corner? I'd be a lifeguard, and I didn't know that I was going to become an aquatic fitness instructor. Mm-hmm. Exactly, which is what, what I did for like six years. So that's that's what I'd be doing now, if not for all this. <laughs> that's not bad. Not we bad. thought we always. I mean, we were writing all throughout high school, and and we knew we were fans of like low budget movies, like Clerks was a movie we loved, and like like Bottle Rocket and stuff like that. Coen Brothers we loved. So like we we actually knew like worst case scenario, like we could make Super Bad on our own, and like mm-hmm. we would go like the very low budget route. We could find some money, and even at that time, cameras were you could get cameras that you can kind of make movies on. Yeah, in our high school, they filmed like a bunch of TV movies and some actual movies there. And Vancouver is kind of just a movie place. Yeah, so like so, right. yeah, it was like in the ether. It was in the ether. That, like, Might it was we have possible. seen your high school? Yeah, our high school was in have a bunch of movies. Have you seen Mastermind with uh, Patrick Stewart? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was a Katie, They made a Katie Holmes movie at our high school called Lou Dis- Diamond Phillips. Disturbing Ooh. behavior. Ooh, a- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they yeah. built a soda shop for the movie, but we thought they were building a soda shop for the community. Oh, it was very exciting. And all the kids got all psyched. Like, oh, a 50 <laughs> style soda shop. And they <laughs> just was screwed for us. For disturbing behavior. But uh, yeah, there was a few movies that they filmed. Wait, was the Marky school. Mark in that? Or was no, that, that, no, that, that was a, I think it's a fear. Yeah, That's fear. fear. I That's think, right. was Devin Sawa in No, you've mistaken Marky Mark with James Vanderbeek. Yeah, believe. no, no, no. It, mm. Yeah, was James Vanderbeek in. No, um. No, was he it? was in Dawson's Creek. Was it Nick Creek. Stahl? No, it was James Dis- Vanderbeek. In Disturbing Behavior? Yes. No, it was Katie False. Holmes. They I'm going two... with Evan. Evan is very no, 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 no. resolute James about this. <laughs> Vanderbeek. They wouldn't have two no. Dawson's Creek oh. people in the same oh. movie. They the, would just the because man. people like you yeah. would be like, this can't be happening. <laughs> was it James Marsden? James yes, Marsden. Right. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Right. Yes, that's Boom. who it was. I just Boom. want to say Seth was on Boom. Dawson's Creek really quickly. <laughs> don't, don't you good. were? I was on Dawson's Creek. <laughs> I was in one episode of Dawson's Creek. I was on one episode of in Dawson's Creek. In the last Creek. season. I think I could have ended the show as well. Yeah, there you go. Me and you, man. We closed it out. (laughs) A young Seth Rogen was in uh, Donnie Darko. I was. That was my first movie ever. Yeah. Yeah. He was a bully. No, no, I wasn't in that. (laughs) Jesus, I had such momentum. That would have been good. But Noah Wiley was. (laughs) It looks like we have a clip of Seth Rogen on Dawson's Creek. Oh, good. (laughs) This is unbelievable. Oh, good. Even then, I'm playing into the stereotype. Who are you? I'm Bob. I'm wearing a tenacious... Audrey! Where the hell is Audrey? Exactly. Oh, is that the blonde girl? You spent the night with my friend and you don't even know her name? Well, we didn't really do much talking, you know what I mean? <laughs> nice. Report. Where is she? <laughs> She's in the crapper. She went in there a while ago. You guys mind if I pee? <laughs> this is all my stuff cut together. Yeah. Somebody we, loves okay. you. I, 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 I had sex with Dizzy Phillips. In the show. <laughs> I get to bring Bob. No way. Fine, then I'm staying here. 
You don't even like him. Sure, it's exciting I do. for me because Katie Holmes was super hot at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. She Bob, was. It was very exciting to be in a car with her. He's dressed like Marty McFly. Which I, I, I was just yes, thinking I the exact same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Busy Phillips is a. It, it's 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 a name that's a lot to live up to in the bedroom. It you is. know what I mean? Like you better. You're going to have a lot of disappointed customers if you just mail it in. You well, know? you don't have to do well. You just have to stay busy. Just yeah, keep things right. happening. She knits as she has sex. At the same time, couldn't there be someone who's too busy <laughs> yeah. in the bed? In the bed? I've, I've, I've experienced that. You it's know no what? good. I'd rather, ha- I'd rather dial them down than bring them up. That's the general. So they yeah. meet you where Always you're easier at. to scale back. Right. Always easier to scale back. You right. want too much food, not too little. Right. You haven't have you had, had a little too busy in the bedroom? I wasn't the one who was too busy. No, no. <laughs> I evidently. But you were no. on the receiving end of like yeah, a it's, flight it's, of the Bumblebee style. It's stressful. Style. It's like, chill out. <laughs> chill out. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got all the time in the world. And here. where's the fire? Did the dude mellow out or did he keep going? He was, he was mad cool. <laughs> I was the dude. <laughs> I'm a busy bee. That's what they call me. <laughs> all right, now you have to find me and Dr. Drew on uh, Dawson's Creek. So where was that? North Carolina? Yeah, Wilmington, North Carolina. Were, were you there for a week? I was there for five days, I think. Yeah. I had a bit of a nervous breakdown, I think, when I was out there. I went a little crazy. It's weird, right? It is. I think my hotel was haunted, I remember thinking. They put us up in a weird old kind of funky place. Yeah, a bad place. I yeah. was going to say a bad, shitty hotel. Well, not <laughs> the floor kind of creaked and it yeah. slanted to one side. And it, was it was scary. Like, I remember being scared like, shitless. Uh, yeah, I didn't it, care for it. But I went back to Wilmington, and it was fucking lovely to do Eastbound and Down. I loved it. It was delightful. Oh, right. Yeah. We, we went to Maybe the it was inner insecurities that you guys had, and the place was actually wonderful. Maybe. Mm-hmm. It's probably true. No, I, I, I was doing Loveline, the, the syndicated radio show. I did Loveline a couple times, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was I there? Did With, I, like I think, Busy Phillips, actually. Oh, shit. Really? I think so. I could I, be wrong. I'm I, 90% sure. I was doing Loveline from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah. Because of the time difference. And then the call times were 7 a.m. So I was going. That's insane. I, I was going back and I would watch, um, oh, what's uh, whatever show had Cousin Balky in it. Oh, Perfect, Perfect Strangers. Strangers. Great show. I would go. The only the only thing is I hadn't seen Perfect Strangers in 10 years, and it started at 3.30 in the morning. It's, it's so, a funny show, though. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it at 3.30, <laughs> except for I knew I had to get up at 6.30 but, to but, go in. And, but make, you couldn't pull yourself away. I could not. Remember your mom said that to me, Drew? Uh, yeah. Okay, fine. You I have no memory of I this. I just don't want a boyfriend at this point in time. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Drew. I don't. This is the head case he's talking about. He's talking about her. No. <laughs> yes. I'm the All right, now that we've proven how, that we both done this, Dawson's how did, how Creek. How did they wind up on Love Line on this show? I have no so, idea. So why did you I don't know why they couldn't come to us. Yeah, well, that's funny. That woman. No, it's just... Um, is this where my episode ends? Beach, with right? them <laughs> right. I knew it. All right. Also, Adam, enough. you're sitting in the world's largest chair. I know. <laughs> I'm Lily Tomlin. My, you, you look two inches tall in that chair. <laughs> One ringy dingy. Yeah. I uh, In my rider... I say giant I need chairs. a chair that makes my ass look tiny. <laughs> this is really I have a problem. I can't with even tell ass. you have an ass in that. That's my. Th- there you go. A mission accomplished. <laughs> the ass is subterranean. In that <laughs> yeah, I think chairs were bigger back then. It was the nineties. It was the nineties. The biggest chairs ever. <laughs> oh, it was all about chair size. And chairs are coming back soon. I yeah. know it. Big chairs will be retro. There back. was. There was. There. Oh, there were almost. They were knocking on the door of love seat. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, you guys go, both could have fit in that one chair. This is four episodes before the show ended, by the oh, way. Oh, man, so I, I think I was literally on like one or two episodes before you. They must have been like, let's close out strong. <laughs> <laughs> let's really bring in the, the rigors for the end. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, should we do uh, a little news? Let me uh, give a little love to one of our uh, fine sponsors, then we'll uh, jump in. And we'll do some news, and you guys jump in and uh, Great. crack wise. We can crack wise on the news. Yes, crack wise. <laughs> love it. Appropriate. All right, Allison Rosen, let's do some news. The news with Allison Rosen. She reads some news from her iPad sometimes. It's good, sometimes it's bad. It's Allison, Allison. And when it's time to wrap it up, she'll sign it off with zip it, cut it. It's Allison, Allison. All right, so it turns out the U.S. government has been secretly collecting the phone records of millions of, uh, of U.S. citizens 
who used Verizon. How, that, the, it, what was leaked was that there's a subpoena for Verizon, but most likely it's all the telephone companies. This has been going on for seven years. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Either. I literally I don't assume care they either. have every porn clip I've watched, every yeah. phone number I've ever had. They've videotaped every sexual encounter. They, they got don't it all. have they don't have the contact of uh, the sorry, the content of any that calls. Busy they don't dude have I did see on the internet. The addresses. Yeah. What they have what they're saying is it's by looking <clears> at <throat> The information in this scope, this amount yeah. of information, they can sort of look at patterns and figure out what are terrorist calling patterns and whatnot. I don't know. I was thinking about it. I was thinking if you're upset that this is happening under Bush, then go ahead and be upset that it's happening under Obama. And if you weren't upset then, you shouldn't be upset now. And I'm not, I, I'm not upset by it, which is weird because I'm liberal, so I feel like I should be. Uh, when Bush did it. Well, first off, well, isn't it from seven years ago? Isn't yeah, I mean, it's been going on the whole time. It's just that it's, now we it's know. Basically, the yeah. Patriot Act, and it's it's narcissism at its best. But if Obama ever, wasn't president seven years no, ago. Bush no, Bush started I mean, it. Was it, going yeah, on yeah, then? I, gotcha. what, what, yeah. I, I experienced this in Hollywood, which is a bunch of super liberal people going, and it's a narcissism where they go, "I don't want people listening to my phone conversations <laughs> that I'm personally." You'll hear my, I, me, I. That's how you know. There's a few things. When someone says uh, home instead of house and they say uh, children instead of kid, if they go, when you come into my home in front of my children, <laughs> children. no one ever goes, when you come into my house in front of my kids, that means nothing. In front of my children in my home. So these, I have neither. Listen when people complain about shit, whatever they're complaining about, get Evan a little mangria, by I the am. way. I almost laughed out loud when I noticed it behind your head. <laughs> I, I assumed my brain said sangria for the first ten minutes. <laughs> then you saw mangria. You can get them. Get them the straight dough. Oh yeah, <laughs> go straight to the balls. I uh, <laughs> so it, you if you listen to these people, it's it's Put down very the bottle. it's it's very it's very narcissistic. It's like my personal conversations that I'm having with my friends and family. Like no, first off. No one gives a fuck about you. Yeah, why the, do they especially think anyone especially your kids? I no actually do like a fair amount kids. of illegal activity, and I don't care that they're reading my shit. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, first off, here's the thing. Um, at least in this country, I don't know what do they do in uh, Canada there. In this country, when you're born, thank you for the mangria. <clears throat> you get assigned a number. Like my twins got assigned a number. It sounds very Orwellian. Like a social security number. Yeah. yeah if, if, if you tattooed it on the back of your neck, it'd be this crazy Orwellian, <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking apocalyptic future we're living in. But you are assigned a number. You cannot not have a number. You get a number assigned to you, yeah. and that number is so the government can track you yeah, and take exactly. money from you for the rest of your life. The yeah. government tracks us to give us money in Canada. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, they, i got to get over they there. They track us to give us social services. <laughs> so this notion that the government, you know, well, they don't know where you are or who you are or what you're doing or what's going on is totally insane. Like, just don't pay taxes for 10 minutes. And see, grow pot plant in your front yard. See how that goes. They'll or, find you. Why don't you just get an alpaca and raise a few of those in your in your dog run and see how the government works. Uh, just add a add an add an addition on and don't ask for permission or a permit. They are just cracking down on alpaca. Do it's big alpaca, <laughs> big al, big alpaca. <laughs> so. <laughs> The little man is taking too much from Big Al. That's, that's why. Right. That's why it's illegal. So <laughs> this is one time when they're not trying to extract money, but what they're trying to do is stop the next set of planes from flying into the next set of buildings, and I'm okay with they that. They say via this they've stopped one big, one significant incident, and they won't say anything more about it. And now, I mean, this shouldn't have even leaked. So I think they're going to have to now – Use was it WikiLeaks? Records. But we already... No, the Guardian reported it. I, I, it it's not clear how but it got leaked. They're, they're not going to say we stopped a pretty insignificant, yeah. Yeah. consequential yeah. incident. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to pay off eventually. <laughs> not, several not yet. G-walking incidents. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. It wouldn't have amounted to anything, but we stopped it. Yeah. Um, also, if you're, what about you know, if you're looking at child porn on the internet? How do you, do you know? Do you want yeah, – exactly. <laughs> I'm saying what hypothetically. If, it was his computer. <laughs> <laughs> don't we kind of want those people looked after? I mean right. it's sort of the same thing. Look, either government's in or they're out, and I figure they're in. To me, this is like old shit though. Like enemy right. of the state covered this stuff like in 1997. Like if, if you don't think they're listening to your cell phone in 2013, like what, yeah. what the Van fuck is wrong with you? Vanderbeek was awesome this, this, in that. Yeah, this is like 20 I – mean, Vanderbeek killed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's old, it's but, old and, hat. But, 
But in, in terms of what we know at this point, it's not yeah. that they're listening in. It's just that they have records of what phone dialed what number. But and for here how long. says that they probably That's all true. listening to yeah. everything. Here's, I would imagine. And the assumption is they're looking at email too. I Here's assume, the way yeah. it worked. Basically, as I said in my book, when a dude who played golf was in the White House and this came out, everyone screamed like stuck pigs. Now we got a guy in there who shoots hoop and everyone's kind of cool with it. I was always cool with it because what is the scenario? Who do you know whose door got kicked in by the jackbooted thugs and they tore his computer out (laughs) and he's a totally innocent guy? Like since this started eight, ten years ago, who do you know who's in a gulag somewhere the, well, how would you know? I how would you know? I would miss them. That's how. I mean, who do you know that's got their shit fucked with? People are are freaking out there about probably it. Probably are people. Shit. Just look at Twitter. There All probably right. are people who are getting fucked with. And we but under, really understand, we do understand. Everyone has to go through the same metal detector at the airport, right? Because we don't want the plane getting blown up. Like, right. I think we should do away with metal detectors. Well, they got the new, they got the new spinny thing where you hold your hands up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like a, that. And you know what? I, I like most about that is that the, it's slowly killing all of us. Well, <laughs> not, not only do my balls glow, exactly, but my the, the shoe blue. print they give you is an old time forty <laughs> shoe print. <laughs> like, like I'm wearing hush puppies or something. Print. There's a they heel. Clogs, they have right. a heel and a front section. <laughs> no one else has. No one has that anymore. But they have this and that. Would there be confusion if they just had? The, you it's know, like a tap shoe. Get an Air Jordan or something fun, you know. And exactly. by the way, put the Nike swoosh there, and let's get some of our money back. Sponsor it. Yeah. I, like to, it I like to force them to pat me down. Exactly. Yeah. If I have to be uncomfortable, they have to be uncomfortable. They have to be uncomfortable. And I always get a giant boner first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you actually opt out? That's the airline lingo for opt not going out? through the body scanner. Uh, mm-hmm. No. I'll just I, I did it me. first because I thought what Seth was saying, yeah. this thing's destroying my testicles and blowing my mind with mm-hmm. cancer. But right. now I think that's what's been happening the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they just fixed it. Yeah, well, maybe. The, and the other thing is that when you quote opt out they make you stand by the machine for like 20 minutes until <laughs> they get someone yeah. and I'm like if, if it is leaking radiation yeah. I think I'm yeah. catching more there's of it. specifically no doors <laughs> it's a good point exactly what I don't like is that little uh, nylon corral they keep you in there's a wisp of nylon yeah. that's between you and freedom <laughs> yeah and yeah, they like that's gonna and the guy's standing there you anyways. start walking out and the person goes hold on and, and then they go okay, and then they unlatch it like that's going to thwart you. But I appreciate that they go through the trouble of making it like a jelly Tempur-Pedic surface that you're yes, standing on. Yes, it's so it's so wobbly. It's like the pad it's, my mother has in her it, kitchen. It is. It's very weird. It's like we, we know you're going to be standing here for 14 seconds. Yeah. So here, have, have, <laughs> have a nice, right. have a nice squishy ride. It's later. always tempting <laughs> to see what happens when they're like, stand here, sir. And if you just said no, no, you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to stand here. <laughs> I think you just go to jail here. for like a week. It is interesting that it's very ergonomic and easy on your back it and is. lumbar and stuff like that. It's not like you're gardening. No. Uh, you're there for 11 seconds yeah, and you're on super, your feet. It's yeah. very strange. Hey, the one time they actually care, you're going to criticize? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I want no right. I still want newer shoes in there. <laughs> you talking about the footprint reminded me how long it's been since I've put my foot in one of those um, – Shoe sizing, shoe things measuring that device. You had to Whoa. step in like every time you went You're to the shoe store. Bran- started shrinking. Yet. Do they use those? Well? <laughs> you talking about a Brannock device? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I am. Device. I like. That. Did you work in a shoe store? Is that real? I knew a dude. <laughs> I did work in a shoe store. Yeah, look it up. It's called a Brannock device. It feels good. It does yeah. feel nice. It's also that weird anticipation. What size is my foot right. going to be what this am time? I and I like am I they... Shaq? Am I, yeah. mi- am I mini me? Like, what? Am, what who am I? It's and like, I like that they be take 11. it from two sides. Mm, I yeah. like that. Well, yeah. your shoe size, but they won't say you two different sizes of sh- shoes, so it kind of is right. irrelevant. No, but they tell you, like, oh, you're fucked. One of your feet's <laughs> a little too small, dude. You're going to be uncomfortable on the left. Yeah. Can I, Sorry. Can I tell you? Can I be honest with you about my shoe size? Please, Level with please us. do. For years, I would just order a size 11, and sometimes it'd be a little bit big, and then I'd go, oh, give me a 10 and a half, and then sometimes it'd be a little bit small. After about 20 years of this, I got measured in one of those Brannock devices, and the guy said, well, your left foot's a 10 and a half, and your right foot's an 11. <laughs> and I never knew that they were half off, and it would just be – catch his catch can if the guy brought yeah. out a shoe for my left foot it would be too big and if he ah. brought out for my right foot it'd be too small but i never knew there were two and do you, different do sizes you have enough cash now that you buy one of each and just go like i that? will never have emotionally <laughs> enough cash <laughs> to buy to do two that. pairs to buy two pairs on, do i will it. never do it once do it once or I just go, I want that one. Yeah. And, and you give the other two to charity you Ooh. feel good oh, yeah, you you find... yourself, right? hold on this could be my j-date 
Yeah, I mean, mean I could party. hook up with yeah. other people that were wildly mis- malformed yes, like exactly, me, yeah. and and then I could give them that shoe. We'd have to argue over if, whether they were suede you could or start leather a whole people. Community. Right, but uh, there's like online dating shit for people that have herpes and stuff, you need right? Shoe match, shoe match, <laughs> shoe match dot com. Yeah, make right. that mismatch fit or something. like I could, that. I could fit. work it out. Yeah, Hit but me. it would work. I like the that. shoe fits. That's oh, right. Oh, that's really good. That was nice. That was good. Thank well, you. you got the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where are we? Uh, you may have heard Paris Jackson attempted suicide. That's She's okay, sad. though. <clears throat> um, she she slit her wrist with a meat cleaver and took a bunch hey. of ibuprofen and then called a suicide hotline. Jesus. Yeah. Ooh. But she's okay, Yeah. they say. And, and But also it's come out today that this was not her first attempt. Wow. What is she, 15? What's – first off, I, I, I can't yeah, figure anything 15. out. All right. Michael Jackson – Could now, not have been her biological father. <clears throat> could not – okay. I don't know. That's that's what it seems, right? All right. Can, let me say this and then let me work. say what everyone, everyone says to me. I go, look, I've seen the Jackson family. Like when you see the Jackson family like from the 70s, they are as black as families come. <laughs> That's how black they are. Like, there's not any confusion about their ethnicity. And you grade it's them? all the way down. His genetics Oh, they fail. Your, your <laughs> Stop what I mean. Oh, oh what what you mean? If you were to grade the level of oh, blackness. I think an F. <laughs> F for super. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's shades. You mean, you oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that sounded a, racist. That sounded you mean, racist. You mean an A. Yeah, they yeah. get an A for Afro. <laughs> they are as black as. Th- no, all the brothers. Show me the Jacksons, you know, circa 1975. You know, they are black. Yeah. And so people do this thing where they go. Well, you never know. I know times when there's a white chick and a black dude and the chick just comes out that the baby looks like Tom Petty. And I'm like, ah, that's never I happened. I never see that. Like I see and people will tell you all the time. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. I mean, I go, no. When I see a there's like there's this is how we created Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> someone was white and someone was black, and now we have Lenny Kravitz. I'm, this I'm is confused. my only real I'm argument for not letting. Just confuse me. Mix, mix marriages, but the Lenny Kravitz argument. <laughs> yes, you want another Lenny Kravitz? People, no, is that I what do, you want? I do want another Lenny? There should Kravitz. be a law. No, I want another Zoe Kravitz. Ooh, okay. <laughs> you go can't for. have that without a Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a pretty fair <laughs> argument. All right, so um, they're very. Dark in skin and in feature and in everything else. They're black. And, and right. And when they say that, oh, no, sometimes you can just have a white kid with blue eyes. It's like, I, I don't see that. I mean, you're so, focusing on the wrong stuff. It's the dancing and singing that matters. That's right. If she can dance and can she can she sing, move? we know what's up. So what happened? And then is whose seed is it? Like, we know it's uh, Rose, right, Debbie whatever. Rose. She who, does look like the mother. Yeah. Right? Who, yeah. Who, who looks like uh, Steven Zahn. I think <laughs> he's a great actor, oh, and a little like uh, oh geez, he's got uh, he's got Zahn and uh, oh shit, what's his name? James Vanderbeek, Ar- Arach- arachnophobia. I gotta think of Dan Aykroyd, John Goodman, no uh, Jeff Bridges, no shit, a spider, a giant spider, Spider Man, <laughs> no, it wasn't Jeff? Uh, no, it was Jeff uh, Daniels, Jeff Daniels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, a little bit. They both have like a bird, birdish quality. Yeah, faces, so you can find the right picture of both of them. You'll yeah, you'll figure it out. This. Okay, so who's the dude then? I I've been wondering this for a long time because Michael looked like Michael before Michael passed, but this is what Michael's genes look like. You know what I mean? This is what he's passing along. He's not passing along the skin bleaching maybe and the nose shot. Maybe he nurtured the genes can you to get a different white place. Jeans? Maybe mm. got white jeans. Bleach his jeans. Bleach his jeans. I don't know. He stonewashed Either those way. Acid washed. <laughs> Acid washed him. Oh. Why? I, I, anyway. So it was a cry for help, as they say. Not yes. A, not, a, yes. Not, a, not a legitimate suicide I hope she gets attempt. Help. Okay. And then also, also in uh, sad, similar news, um, a couple in Brooklyn committed suicide. She was a psychologist. He was a motivational speaker, and they were the co-hosts of a radio show called The Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, I Boy. believe it is that detail that is making everyone well, latch on to this story. I, I, it, it is ironic. I, yeah. I would argue or it's that. a dark truth you're having trouble accepting. That is what you do to pursue happiness. Well, I, I do. I always feel like cops are That's almost. That's the season finale. 
<laughs> Cops are almost We've criminals, been. and everyone's yeah. always like, whenever you know, when the preacher's talking about gays burning in hell, he's, he's thinking about cock, you know, <laughs> as he's doing it. I know. No, I, am. I mean, I think right. that a lot of people get into psychology because they're trying to heal themselves. Right. Well, they seem like if they have a is was it like a cable access show or like a weird show? Was it? A it was a radio show, and they would take calls. It mm. was probably like a silly. Was mm-hmm. it? A, I mean, if it was like a silly show, then it was clearly like was it too, silly or no, serious? I, th- yeah. I don't think it was silly. Yeah. I think it was pretty straightforward, like t- teaching people and how, how did to they help do themselves it? with what are called exit bags, which it's a plastic bag with helium in it. It's supposed what? to be a, a relatively easy way to go. An exit bag. Mm-hmm. I've never really? heard like of that. a name that specific. Wow. Do they sell them online? Some at the party. They star. sell. By them? the way, I know this from the story. It's an okay, exit good. You bag. You know that. <laughs> how and how does it? How does it work? So it's got helium. Yeah, I don't know the particulars of it. Let's uh, buy some. Let's figure but, out how that goes. Can someone look up exit bags? I don't know the particulars of it, but um, you're basically suffocating yourself if you're taking in helium instead of oxygen. Is there any chance they maxed out on happiness <laughs> and considered this <laughs> like this a, a good wrap like, up? Maybe it's a kid's birthday gone wrong. Right. That's what I think it might be. The, so you put the bag on there, and it has a helium source, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna take in helium, other than it must, and the idea of um, sounding like one of the chipmunks when you're talking about how cruel the world is, <laughs> it's got to be ironic. I think, I think, I think I love it's them. a big laugh on the way out. It's you're a looking, big laugh. Everyone everyone looking at this wrong. Can you believe we're doing this? <laughs> and here's a, a couple of disgusting details. Oh, I want to know about this exit bag. It's their terrible. bodies, they had been dead for about a week when they were found. Oh. And blood was found dripping, like someone in an apartment below oh, saw like blood melted. dripping through. Oh. Is that what? Because I, I couldn't oh. figure it out. I guess that. I guess you melt. No, yeah, my cousin had her neighbor bad. pass away, an old man, and, and it, gets, it gets nasty. You melt. Yeah. It gets real. Yeah. Suicide bag. Yeah. It's yeah. a device bag. consisting of a large plastic bag with a draw cord used to commit suicide. All right. Used in conjunction with inert gas like helium or nitrogen, uh, which prevents the panic sense of suffocation and struggling during the unconsciousness. Wow. So you're. Oh, I didn't you're, know all that. Your lungs and your brain and your body say, say well, there's something coming in. Yeah. Oh. So you don't so panic. Don't go into panic mode. But really, you're passed out. But I don't know if you use it in conjunction with with drugs to, like, knock yourself out. Doesn't seem like as it. well. Couldn't hurt. Usually, that's <laughs> a decent point. Right to die groups recommend this form of suicide as certain, fast, and painless, mm. according to the 2007 Kid tested, study. mother approved. Oy. Wow. Well, wait, how do they do the study? <laughs> what? You need volunteers. Maybe they have the studies just what do you consider to be a good form of suicide? Right, according to yeah. a 2007 question. Yeah. yeah. Question. It's all <laughs> these... It was more of a question. <laughs> Yeah, none of these questionnaires, they oh, they never finish filling them out when how was your experience. They never check that <laughs> box. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so sad. All right. So yeah, sad. But, uh, really sad. I like the right to die group. That'd be a bummer, you know, like for, for the picnic. You know the right I mean? to die picnic? I brought the ambrosia salad. Fine. Set it anywhere. Okay. See, again, I think you're wrong. They'll be like, Frank killed himself in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's all inject heroin into our dick holes. <laughs> <laughs> They got people do that. For. I, I'm sure. I'm sure people do. Yeah. That's how we yeah. write together. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he shoots me up. I shoot him up. Right to right. We dock heroin. Wow. Uh. So, thank God. Uh, blanket or whatever her name was didn't have Paris. Oh, Paris. There is a blanket. Uh, there is a blanket. Blanket's eleven. Yeah. God didn't have one of these uh, bags on him, huh? It's yeah, true. yeah. I know. It's true. Yeah. Um. One of New York City's largest hotels is ending its room service. Mm, what? Instead, they're going to have a self-serve – or they're going to try out having a self-serve cafeteria. It's the New York mm. Hilton Midtown. Oh, that mm. sounds uh, fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm really not – I'm not in favor of you this ending thinking, of room I'd service. I'd love to leave my room and fucking drag my ass downstairs and pay for shit instead that, of yeah. having it brought to That's me. That's like <laughs> the thing about hotels that makes them good. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll bring you shit. That's you the know, main difference between your house and a and hotel. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know what I don't like while we're talking about room mm. service? I don't like when room service stops serving at 10, but you're doing a show and you're not going to be back till midnight. No, or you midnight. arrive late and you arrive late. It's fucking bullshit. No, it's good. We don't need we don't need Paris on there. We just need we just need uh, Jeff Daniels and uh, Steve Zahn. 
<laughs> no, no, no. And in Roe, is it, is it Debbie Roe? Uh, yes, Debbie, Debbie Roe. Ro. Yeah. But they're saying that they've seen it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. That's like Jeff Daniels in a wig. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Can I tell you, I did some, I did some <laughs> ethnic judging uh, over the weekend in, in your own Vancouver. And well, I wasn't. What was the assessment? I was not happy with myself. I was not. What were you judging? It was. There's a lot of Asian people. I, I was. Vancouver. No. Was it? No. I, I judged against my own ethnicity, <laughs> which is Italian. And Cracker. I was I was in my room. That's right. Mm-hmm. I was in my room. I was in my underpants. And I had exactly ha- what you don't want to happen when you're in your underpants at 3 a.m., which is a knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I was up. And there was a knock on the door, and I just opened the door in my underpants, and it was a woman from room service holding a huge plate of lasagna. <laughs> and she said, you ordered lasagna? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> Although I did want to do the thing where I went like, it does – I does will take a bite. Sure. Like, I do want a bite. Like, I want my bite. a bite to remember. I just want to wet my beak. <laughs> like – now that you bring it up, I am stoned. It is three in the morning, I and I do lasagna. want some lasagna. Now that you've introduced it's, that it's into my be brain, a miracle! Yeah, <laughs> how'd how you know you what have, I was thinking? You have a psychic room service. <laughs> You're like a lasagna <laughs> angel that just flies over <laughs> my lasagna shoulder. Lasagna fairy. Yeah. So I said, uh, no, I didn't order lasagna. That's you got the wrong room. But since we took up the whole floor, I realized. Oh, this is going to somebody else in this group. And then I thought, Doug DeLuca. Because <laughs> he's he, Italian. He's Italian and he's big. <laughs> I, and I know this is going to DeLuca's room. So I said, uh, uh, all right, not my room. Have fun. And uh, then. Uh, Do you I, think she just chose an Italian sounding name and that's why you got it? Yeah. I don't know Who what it, I, it? Uh, she, Corolla. She, Try Corolla. She got the wrong room number. I don't know. So then what happened? As I said, now I did not get the lasagna, but I wish I had the lasagna. But now I'm going to go to bed. And then about 15 minutes later, uh, Daniel, other guy, started banging on the door, screaming, uh, we're restarting the party. (laughs) And (laughs) so I said, okay. So I put my pants back on and came back out. And as we were sitting in DeLuca's room, um, I said, "Uh, Doug, you missed your lasagna. They brought it to my room. And Cleto. The Mexican. He ordered the, the lasagna. The wave Mexican said, oh, wow. I ordered it. And I said, wow, man, my world is spinning. And this is why I can either never judge again or I really have to judge more. Yeah. Judge more. Till judge you more. Until I get better at it. I'm not doing sign. enough judging. I've lost practiced. my fucking judging finger. Lost enough. its mojo. I need soft. To, yeah, I've gone soft. Yeah. Now, when you get the party restarted at 3 a.m., what, what does that do? even mean? Yeah. You uh, smoke more weed? If somebody starts calling your homo through the door and pounding on it and yelling you're not going to bed. And then there's that moment you have where you go, if I can withstand the pounding for another eight seconds, I'll stop. never have to come out. <laughs> but I can't take it. I'm coming out. And then what do you do? You drink more? You smoke more weed and, and you drink more. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about right. So and, it's not that you have fun. It's just that you don't get to sleep? Yeah, yeah you, it's basically what it is. There's the nothing, nothing <laughs> good ever happens from that sweet spot from like from from. Oh, actually, I went to bed at like well, did, four. Did or you get any like lasagna? That. That'd be good. Yeah. Did you get a bite of the lasagna ever? No, Cleto never got. He well, never got his lasagna. Uh, what happened to lasagna? That's what I said to him. <laughs> and then I said, uh, <laughs> I said, what? The next day when we were driving to the airport, I said, did you ever get your lasagna? And he said he found it. But then it was in his room getting cold, and he ran back and forth and just took a little chip bites little out bites. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Wildly unsatisfying lasagna experience. lasagna yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was devastated by his lasagna. <laughs> mm-hmm. Room service. Look, I've said a million times, I'm tired of two things. I'm tired of the fucking tray that gets put out on the floor of yeah. the carpet that I share with your room. Yeah. Like, first off, I don't want to do any math on, hey, look at this guy. Looks like he's a burgers and fries guy. He's a Denver omelet guy. Like, I judge. I look at what you ate and I decide do. how healthy you and are, I'm, decide what you like. I'm tempted to steal fries. I'm always <laughs> tempted to steal fries and certain parts of the salad. Yeah, or like a chicken finger. If there's an untouched chicken finger, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's hard. Yeah, chicken fingers, yeah. plum tomatoes, things yeah. are kind of on t- autonomous. Crackers, yeah. those are wraps. Yeah, things that aren't touched. Autonomous. I've taken wrap crackers. Yeah. <laughs>
Everyone has. It's That's full, why that they're there for full that. Autonomy. But I've always said taking the tray of your your half eaten shit and just putting it out in the hallway. It's a dick and, and it sits there for twelve hours. Does yeah. that seem like a place no. that a five star hotel should be doing? No, you dial room service and they come and pick up they your should fucking come tray. Fucking they pick do, it up. and they say most of them say dial, and most people don't want to do it at that point. No, I leave it right by my front door inside the room. I do inside, but sometimes I, I see, put it outside my door in the middle of the hall. I've <laughs> seen the whole fucking <laughs> cart pushed out is, there. Yes. Oh, there's families of squirrels now living next to your room and stuff. No, they should every they should do what they do with valet. You know what they do with parking? You guys ever do you do a voice on the family guy or something. Yeah, I've you, done that. You go down and they go, how long's it gonna be? Yeah. And you go, I don't know, like twenty minutes, half yeah. an hour, and they go, okay. And they put your car in a place. Yeah. When they bring you the burger or the Denver omelet, the guy should go why don't you come back? Yeah, it's going to come back in like 40 minutes from now. Yeah, it'll yeah. We'll be done in an hour. It'll be like yeah. eight yeah. minutn's That's good. Then, uh, instead, I bet you the could, shit in the hall. I bet you could proactively enact that, and it would work. Like, if you told the guy, I bet if you just told the guy, come back in an hour and get this shit, he'd be like, okay, great. Especially and he'd probably slide like him it. some fries. He'd probably think, that's a good system. That's right. what we should do. Right. And then yeah. you have to have that uncomfortable conversation. Is the tip included? Well, it is. <laughs> to but some degree. we still appreciate it. You know, it's always that thing. Where, and I did enjoy your last 18 movies, Rich Guy. <laughs> There's an element of a tip included. I feel like the minute you ask, that just means you have to add an extra tip. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Because no matter what I hear, I feel like I have to tip, even if I heard that it's included. Yeah, I try not to talk. Just hand signals. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pretend no, to be I on contact. the phone. You know, it's oh. weird. You know what? Uh, let me say something about the food industry. You guys need to fucking make a decision. If it's a group larger than six, it's tip included. If it's me eating alone with a boner in my underpants, it's tip included. Well, which the fuck is it? You know what I mean? You couldn't get more solo than me in a hotel watching Sports Center in my underpants eating Cleto's lasagna. That's solo, yeah. and that's tip included. And then there's more than five, six people tip included. Well, which not, is it? This pisses me off the most. When you go to a restaurant that's kind of nice and it says six people or more, 18% gratuity, you yeah. got to be nice to demand that. Yeah. I agree. And well, also, that's let where a waiter earn it. That's where they really show their colors is in right. the larger group, like because you require more attention and care. Yeah, if it demands the six person, eighteen percent, I just come up with more shit. I need more ice. This ice is not good ice. Exactly. I'm is paying that for this. what it is? It's that it's more work to handle a large group. I yeah. think that's what it is. I would assume. I think they also just think that everyone in the group's going to be like, ah, he'll fucking pay for oh. it. Oh, yeah, they get stiff. But on the other hand. All right, all right, don't get me fucking going. Go to meeting is where you should go. I order all my room service from go to meeting. I like to look the guy in the face when I'm ordering that uh, omelet. You have the menu up there. Is a little that's right. Go down. I do like that part where you're asking them for stuff, you, and and then you're judging. You guys got coleslaw? It's not on the menu. Yeah, exactly. No, we don't have coleslaw. No coleslaw. No, no coleslaw. No coleslaw. Interesting choice. Yeah. Wow. You know people love coleslaw. It's a pretty big place. A lot of people traveling from slaw, you know, places that are pretty slaw. Places that are slaw rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they pack their own coleslaw. Exactly. You assume people bring coleslaw? Uh, <laughs> would it hurt to have the coleslaw option? You have lettuce and mayonnaise and lemon juice. Could I you, feel like could you, you could throw some something salt? together. You do have cutting boards and a knife, right? Is there anyone there with any slaw experience you whatsoever? Got a, you got a yeah. Back there? Uh, yeah, we could definitely have some slaw. Um, <clears throat> is there any kind of slaw outlet nearby <laughs> where I could purchase my own slaw, perhaps? <laughs> Nothing? Interesting. So none at all. No. Okay. But yet you serve burgers and grilled cheese and all the things that slaw goes so nicely with. That's an interesting choice. Or non choice You were in Canada. Less slaw. Yeah. <laughs> really? Less slaw. You're not slaw-centric? We, we got vinegar slaw, and we just got less. We're, we're, we're really? We're slaw heavy in Canada. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm judging now. That's I like true. places where there's slaw. Yeah. Slaw rich nations. You know what I like to do? I like to dip the fry into the slaw juice every once Whoa. in a while. Like I think just that's suck really, on that. really weird. Yeah, it is freaky. And then, but then you'll hit ketchup too and make your own little secret slaw sauce. That is. That's cool. Yeah, Most that's people cool. revive the, the slaw juice is hated. It, the fry <laughs> loves it. It laughs it right <laughs> up. It's juice. its best friend. Don't give away all your secrets, man. All right, one more story. These guys are important. Okay. All right. Well, there, Washington State is uh, finding itself in a pickle, mm -mm. In a, an unusual... That's good with slaw. Feel, yeah, that is. ...situation, you, which is... Do you like pickle juice, too? Hold on. What kind of Jews are you that you're not down with the slaw? They're we're Canadian. from We're Canadian Jews. They don't it, do slaw? They do vinegar-based slaw. Uh, There's no cream. Not, yeah. They we're not as mayonnaise-based in Canada. Wow, yeah. man. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry to bum you out, dude. <laughs> this is as bad as you getting Dawson Creek canceled, exactly. man. <laughs> I think we both did that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What's oh, that's the- okay. So they have drug sniffing dogs in Who Washington does? State. Washington State University. Uh-huh. Just the, just, just the state. state in general? Yeah. Yes. Okay. One, mm-hmm. You know. Uh, they have drug-sniffing dogs, and now pot is legal there. So mm. they are trying to figure out what they're going to do with these dogs who sniff for pot. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people are suggesting that they retrain them to not – Mm-hmm. Not think of pot as something that they need to, you know, sniff out. But mm-hmm. then some people are saying, no, you know, let them them still sniff out pot because over an ounce is illegal. Mm-hmm. I say well, put, put them down. Yeah, <laughs> put them all down. And that's then right. that's what the rest of the people think. Get them the bag. <laughs> Give them the doggy bag. Retire them. <laughs> okay. Give them their gold watch and let them go on. <laughs> gold leash. Yeah, the doggy leash. bag that's hooked up to the inert gas. <laughs> the doggy um, bag. Yeah, let's let's have him sniff out helium for a good four bag. hours. <laughs> um, all right, you know how they train those dogs. First off, they can use any dog, they which can I use like. Any dog, like, it, it could be a Shih Tzu. Yeah, that, that, any dog. That's what's adorable. Any any dog <laughs> that has a uh, chutzpah. <laughs> it's they need drive. gumption. It's got to want it. Seriously, <laughs> you, you, you got to like some dogs are a little too laid back and yeah, they're like, just no good like at like that. If, I, if I was to get busted, I'd want a St. Bernard. I'd want a pug to bust. A noble bust. Yeah. <laughs> I'd want a cute little dog. Or a chihuahua. Bust. That'd be funny as hell. Yorkie. Yeah. Except for, you know, talking to your prison mate about who took you down. You know, who dropped a dime on you. Chihuahua. <laughs> the Taco Buttons. Bell guy. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. No. So um, they train them this way. They'll they'll use cocaine or they'll use weed or they'll use, you know, backyard fruit or like whatever. They can sniff out anything. They think they're looking for their toy. Really? This is why I always travel with a toy, <laughs> <laughs> by the way. But they think they're looking for this toy and they start to, they stash it. And then once they find the weed or whatever, they'll throw them the toy and they just grab their toy and go yeah. go running away. So they That's, start to associate the weed. They associate yeah. or the Coke or the yeah. whatever it is with it. Now, here's the question. If the dog's sense of smell is like a million times more keen and sensitive than a human's, and they encounter another dog, and they put their nose up the other dog's ass. Is this a avalanche of shit that's hitting them, or is it transcend shit? And oh, is it like one yeah. pure like you, you, note of shit? I think. Or are they smelling what the dog like, ate? I think it's like right. wine to it's, a human. Mm. They're sniffing their cork, the brown cork. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the top notes. Well, yeah, but no, it's in. It's, <laughs> yeah, hints of cocaine, top the notes of, of another dog's asshole. Top <laughs> notes of cow can. Exactly. Um, a finish of shit. <laughs> it's pushy without being assertive. <laughs> or assertive without being pushy. Either way. Here's the thing. I think you're right. I think their shit goes so far past. What 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 the smell is like? It's so keen that they can smell it in its previous form. Yeah, you think they can tell what that dog ate? Like literally, it can be like, okay, there's like some horse in like, or or yeah, or you just love the smell of shit. <laughs> yeah, which they probably do. When my dog eats its own shit, I have told myself that it's because he's smelling food he ate. Your dog eats its own shit? Not that often. Get but him sometimes. the doggy bag. <laughs> <laughs> I think that means I don't know why. Is what does it, that mean? I don't know. I think it means your dog's not happy. <laughs> I think it means your dog. See, really he loves it. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some dogs I think just it, eat he's shit. a puppy. I think it's a phase. I yeah. hope. I, think I mean, it's I, low I ate mine when I was young. It's low yeah. self-esteem. It is. Yeah. I think, right? Although eating another dog shit is even fucking lower. I, I, Maybe I it's say. a dominance but, uh, thing. But a lot of dogs mm-hmm. are into other animals' shit in general, like mm-hmm. cat shit, raccoon yeah. shit, mm-hmm. bird like, shit. My yeah, dog eats bird shit, which is weird. Really? It's. I swear, I saw him lick up a little pile of. He my dog's my licked, car. licked some bird shit as well. Yeah. All right. Kind of like, oh, Let's on. bring it home, baby oh, That's girl. the news. I'm Allison Rosen. Zip it, cunts. <laughs> <laughs> that was the news with Allison Rosen. <laughs> Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. This is the end is the name of the movie. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and, People uh, wouldn't know if that was live or not. No, exactly. I, it, it confused me for a moment. Can I uh, – one last question. One yeah. last question. <laughs> I have this thought. I, I, I was thinking about it as I was um, thinking about the wild success that uh, my friend, another Seth, Seth McFarlane had with his movie Ted. Yes. I thought giving that 
teddy bear or bong was a smart move. Yeah. It gets a lot of people in, and I think it gets a lot of repeat business because I think there's a, like, strong stoner community. And yeah. I think also when you see a movie and you're baked on a Friday, it's easy to go back and see it on Sunday. It's you kind of want to see it again. Yeah. So I thought – if you're doing comedy, working the bong in is not a bad plan. No. Is it? Is it been discussed? I mean, is, do you guys sit down and go, wait a minute, where's the bong? It's been 11 minutes. It's it's not a marketing ploy for us. <laughs> exactly. It's just organic, I guess. <laughs> but it probably would be smart. He probably is crazy. He's, he's a million times more successful than we are financially. Yeah, he's a calculated so, man. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he probably puts a lot more thought into that shit than we do. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that Teddy We're bear. actually stoned, so we don't come up with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. All right. This is the end. It is out in theaters Wednesday, June 12th, and it is a hoot. I recommend it highly. Website, thisistheend.com. You can Twitter, this is the end. I know it's going to be huge. The reviews have been great. I've been seeing the billboards all over town. Thank you guys so much for coming in, and uh, come back anytime you like. Thank you for, Thanks having, for having, us. having us. Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, Allison Rosen, Bull Brian. Oh, me and Jay Moore at the Will Turn Theater coming up August 3rd. So nice. come on out and hang out and have some laughs with us. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla saying mahalo. All right, let That's me tell you it. what's not gauche. Tommy John, fall is chaos in your pants. Overheating one second, freezing the next. Be ready for anything with underwear that handles everything. I'm wearing my Tommy Johns right now. I would never leave the house without my Tommy Johns. Breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands. Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Over 16 million pairs sold. This fall, you got to upgrade what's underneath with the new Tommy John underwear and their luxuriously soft loungewear. Oh, if you guys have not partaken, you must. I mean, the loungewear, just so soft. Good enough to wear anywhere, but feels good enough to go to bed in. Uh, best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guaranteed. Get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash classics. That's TommyJohn.com slash classics for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash classics. See site for details. And now Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg in studio. Hilarious. Hilarious. This is the end is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Same. It's so strong. My favorite part, though, is when he picks up Jay Baruchel from the airport, and they go eat Carl's Jr., and then they hang out and play video games and get high for the first, like, ten minutes. I'm like, let me just put that on repeat. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's a dream of a life. Uh, all right, and Jay Barisell, another uh, guest of the show, uh, yeah. awesome guest. Oh, his last appearance was phenomenal. He, he really. If it wasn't great. so late in the year, he would have been guest of the year. I think so too. All right, before we get going with the next clip, on our mind, everybody, check out Geico.com. Get a quote. See how much you could save. How easy is it? It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. All right, let's get going with another clip. This one from 2016, and Adam. I mean, this year we've heard a lot of ranting about Adam going to the beach and what it's been like going to the beach every day and how we can't Didn't go to the beach. know he's such a beach guy. He's, look, he is a beach guy, and everyone's thinking, man, when did he become a beach guy? Well, he's been a beach guy for a while because this clip is from 2016, and he also went to the beach back then. Uh, this is Adam Carolla Show, episode 1758, Dominic Monaghan. On this portion, uh, ironically, they uh, mess up his name, and at the last time he was on, it was another name mix-up. They messed up Dominic the first time and Monaghan the second time, but there was a funny little catch-up. They tried to explain it here at the top of the episode of this clip. Uh, it's Adam's Day at the Beach with the family. You get some Q&As with a very bizarre hypothetical question for Adam. This is from February of 2016. Uh, Dr. Spaz, Gina Grad, and Brian Bishop also in studio. Check it out. the highest capacity to irritate you <laughs> hey thank you that's true <laughs> super power. where's an ace award for that oh, wow. uh it's coming uh dr <laughs> spaz is here thank you thank you good lenses bad frames everybody he's he gonna... won an ace award for that last year no, that was the most awkward moment Mm-hmm. The ability to piss off Adam I he I kicked claim... you out of the studio you yeah. think he was happy you won an award for <laughs> that. I don't like awkward associated with my uh, my name no, no. That's had to be a hard road to hoe. Marriage is it's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. Awkward, Doctor Spaz. No, I. Uh, 
I uh, let's see. So uh, I took Philly cheesesteak. Did I say hi? I said hi to you, mm-hmm. Brian. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. The drop precipitated everything. That's what I thought. You didn't say hi to me. I took. Uh, <laughs> it's understood. We took uh, Phil to the to the beach for the first time oh. yesterday, and uh, he's a dog who jumps into the showers. Um, oh, I'll say there's no thing uh, you want to know, sort of this universal enjoyment. Uh, bring your pup to the beach, have the dog go nuts at the beach, and everyone, al- everyone around there. You should literally charge admission because I, I the thing, you know, they do this thing where it's like, well, this, you know, uh, hibiscus tea lowers your blood pressure mm-hmm. or whatever. Seeing a lab puppy running out into the surf and then running back and then barking at seagulls. Oh, it's pretty great. In the oh. ocean, like everyone just sits there and just stares at it. And for whatever period of time you're staring at this dog running in and out of the tidal pools, you're not oh. thinking about your mortgage or your ex-wife or the upcoming divorce or any it's just... <laughs> 100% dog. You're in the moment. 100% yeah. ocean. Lynette posted a video of him digging because he's a dog. He yes. digs. Natalia could not wrap her head around it. Yeah, Natalia, we were, uh, were so watching good. it now. Yeah, she, he's going nuts. Natalia was crying because he was running out into the ocean and she thought uh, he's never going to come back. And uh, I just say, uh, listen, uh, everybody, uh, go out experience those uh, little simple Aww. pleasures uh, in life. And, Sandy uh, little snout. Little little Philly cheesesteak <laughs> ran uh, all through uh, Malibu yesterday, and we had, uh, we had a great time. So you can get, you can get the pictures at uh, adamcarolla.com and uh, see <laughs> Phil enjoy himself. But in... I- in- Yes. Oh, good. I was I had the pleasure of meeting Phil. Uh, Phil E. G. Yes, yesterday at the studio. Uh, we all got to pet him real quick. He's teething. And he like, he likes to nip. He nips on your hand. <laughs> but not hard. Just no, to know you're there. He's just, just, yeah, he, with his uh, barely teethed gums. Yeah. Yes, he. Uh, great. He's he's a good soul. And uh, again, uh, at the beach, uh, the, the simpler pleasures. It's one of those things where. I never get out there. The wife and kids always get out there. But I went yesterday, and I just said when I got back, well, let's, let's do this more. It's just, we, just sitting there. Is that one of those things where the, the idea of going to the beach seems like it's not overwhelming, but it's just a pain in the ass. The, whole the, park, the parking, the getting it together, the yeah. sunblock, the blah, blah, the sand, the cleaning, the uh, food, drink, all that stuff. Yes. Once you're there, you're in it, and you're like, this is great. I'm never leaving. Well, what you don't realize, or maybe you do, is that there is something, like every bad song from the 70s that talks about the sea, or the mistress of the oh. sea, or the, the, the salt level in your blood being the same ratio as that in the ocean. When you get to that ocean, there is something... Unlike other places, yeah. you know, they tell you, oh, you got to go to California Adventureland at Disney and see a bunch of stuff made out of styrofoam and, you know, plexiglass yeah. and simulations of Pleximile this and of, yeah. miserable people dressed up in indigenous outfits and things <laughs> like that. That doesn't do anything for my blood pressure. But there's something about, first off, that's like that constant, cool, clean yes. breeze coming at you, this in and out of the tide. Just It's, it's literally it's like the ocean is breathing. Yes, and the sound. And the oh. sound. Oh, and right. the seagulls and the whole thing, and, and that everyone there is having a great. Everyone's in a good mood. Yes, nobody's in a bad mood. Always See, the opposite of the DMV. Yep. <laughs> and there is something. You put your little tootsies in the sand, and the thing rolls in, and all of a sudden, everything that's in your head, all the trouble and the angst and the whatever, yep. whatever's going on in the Middle East with the ethnic cleansing and everything, it all just it all just melts away mm-hmm. for that time period, and. A lot of people go, well, you know, you go down, you talk to a therapist, you know, you get those problems. Therapy is fine, but A, you realize you're paying, Mm -hmm. and B, you're in the middle of the city, and C, you don't trust this person, and D, it's nothing as good as just putting your toes in the sand. Just go, go experience that. Why is it no beachside DMV? We could we could we could address a lot of these problems. I think, swim up kiosk. Yeah. Oh. I, I think the real estate is more valuable to the guys You're who want to open right. the sushi joints right. yeah. as uh, well. All right, we got uh, questions, we got answers, uh, we got Doctor Spaz. Did we figure out from Matt whether he just told me Moynihan on the, or we've all been saying Moynihan we on, try, on the phone? Bobby Moynihan, of course, yes. on the show. I haven't figured it out yet. Let me go speak, speak to him. Ask him if he just said to me, this. that's what we've all been saying. Or YouTube an interview so someone re- introduces him and we'll know how they introduced him. I'm going with Monahan. Or, or I just, read his name, which says Monahan. No, but there's many names that can go. Like Faith. No, I, I'm no, the, Mike, Mike, sorry. How dare you? Mike August's last name, I just had this discussion with my wife. Mike August's last name is Tamarillo. Right. And the way you would read it, you probably should say Tamarillo. Or Tamarillo. 
or something, Radio. but it's pronounced Tamarillo. Sure. That's how he does okay. it. So you, you can't just read the name sometimes. It's how they pronounce yeah. Tamarillo versus Tamarillo or yeah. Tamarillo or whatever. And it's funny because Lynette's like, Mike's Italian? Yeah, 100% <laughs> Italian. Why does he go with August? Because two times in his life, he tried to spell Tamarillo for somebody who mispronounced it. And he went, fuck this. Yeah. I'm going with my middle name. And that's how the guy's wired. That's and great. I said, I kind of like that about him. Like, yeah. he just went, fuck it. If I, I don't want to spend any more time in my life talking to anybody about how to spell it or how awesome. to pronounce it. You go with Mike. He just goes, and your last name, August, like the month. And then that's it. He walks yeah. away. Great. If it was Tamarillo, every single, yeah. or Tamarillo, every single stop. exchange would be Yeah, he's that. all the writing on the wall. All right. Matt, do I have a brain tumor, sir? Brain? No, I apologize for the confusion. <laughs> we booked Dominic a couple weeks ago. I had said Monaghan. You said, isn't it Moynihan? And oh, I boy. believe we all sat back here, and I believe that it was decided it was Moynihan. So then when you just called me and said, is it, I said Moynihan on the phone. You said, is it Moynihan? I said, I think that's what we all said. You said, that's what we've all been calling him. Better than Monaghan. I don't spend a lot of time with Brian and Gina. Though, okay. So. All right. All right. <laughs> Just so I'm not nuts. That's all. All right. We're good. You're both wrong. All right. Everyone's wrong. Wow. All right. So we got uh, Dr. Well, I'm I'm trying to be sensitive. I'm trying That's to ask. Um, I mm-hmm. can't wait for line five. Um, all, right, all right. We got line five. Well, all right. Well, let's do line five then. Hey, uh, Scott, 20, Bakersfield. Hey, Adam, Gina, and Bald. What's How going are you guys on? doing? What's going on? Okay, uh, so one thing real quick, Adam. I know you're not the biggest fan of Bakersfield, but just north of your beloved Fox Theater, uh, we do have a muffler shop that in huge, huge font painted on says, No Muff Too Tough. Wow, now I'm back. That's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. it's awesome. Scott Alrighty, has a 40-year-old but... voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has an old soul. Oh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a 40-year-old name, that's why. <laughs> but uh, so... I've got uh, another great uh, hypothetical for you. All right. Okay, so uh, your mom and Lynette switch bodies, Mm -hmm. and you have to have sex with one of them to switch them back. (laughs) Who do you go for? My mom and Lynette switched bodies. Uh So Lynette, soul and psyche is in my mom's decrepit body. And vice versa. And vice versa. And uh, how aware of this are they? Oh, they are fully aware. That's good. So they're they, fully... need, they need your help. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. think if they're fully aware, I got to go with mom's decrepit body because because Lynette would be in it and aware and understanding what's what's going on and, and vice versa. I couldn't do the, the body with the mom's soul and psyche in it, yeah. especially because that's lose-lose. That's your mom being pissed off and then your wife and her de- <laughs> decrepit body being pissed off yeah. as well. So there's no win. Yeah. Yeah. But I would just make it anal to play it oh. safe. You know? That way you don't have to yeah. face him. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> but that's a good. That's uh that's good. You know, the best hypothetical question I don't like to brag, but uh the be- you the best hypothetical question is when you get the person to flip flop on their answer. Mm. mm. Also, I don't like the hypothetical question person who won't play. Like, you know, you go, right. How much to shoot the president? No amount of money. No amount of money. How about a billion dollars? No, there's no amount. I think it's it's insane because it's called the hypothetical question. The very essence of the question means that you'll never have to engage in it. You won't be called on this. You'll never be called on (laughs) it. It's like, no, I I could never blow a guy. No, I got to know which Baldwin (laughs) brother. I would never blow a guy. (laughs) I need to know which. It's a hypothetical. Which Baldwin brother would I wouldn't because I couldn't blow. It's like, I hate. Don't you hate that person? Yeah. Are those yeah. person like are they dumb, homophobic, or like that uptight, or like what what is their thing? You know what I mean? Who won't engage? I feel passive it, aggressive. It, yeah, it's like it's sort of, yeah. of your a job as an American that you must answer a hypothetical question. Mm-hmm. Al- you know, Alec, when you, you know, yeah, you go, Alec or Steve, neither one. <laughs> Alec or Steve, neither one. Mm-hmm. It's like I no, love your that. only two choices yeah, are right. Okay. So the one that I get people to flip flop on and that I'm most proud of is the woman at the office. Gina, mm-hmm. uh, you are all we got here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but it turns out you're a lot of women. So oh. um, there's always the person at the office. If you ask any chick who works with more than four people, mm-hmm. 
there's always the dude that creeps them out. Yes. Picture him. You have to picture that dude. Picture him. You have to picture him. <laughs> and it's not it's not he's a felon or anything, but it's like, oh, God. And then you go, okay, imagine having sex with that guy. And they always shudder. Like, yeah. they go, ooh. Yeah. It's easy in radio because there's like a whole floor is full <laughs> of guys. <laughs> it's easy in radio. <laughs> Chicks. Like, not so much in manufacturing, but in radio, sure. there's like whole yep. floors yep. of dudes where like everyone's like, oh, Bob Moore, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, God, no. Please, no. No, no not Jack Silver. Oh, no, man. no. Like, they, there's, the whole radio is, is strewn yep. with those kind of guys. They, didn't want to be locked in a studio they're, with. They're attracted to radio. Yeah. Yep. So. I got you, mine. You got yours. Yep. Imagine me. No, imagine the opposite, peeps. <laughs> All right. So you got that guy. Yep. Now, you lay down with that guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or you don't. Okay. Or you don't. Or you don't. Now, you either lay down with him and you have intercourse with him. But at the end, when you're done, he's erased of all, all memory of it. He doesn't know it. Okay. You will know it. No one else knows it. Okay. No one else will ever know it. Okay. Or you never lay down with him, and everybody you work with is completely convinced that you did, no. including that person, oh, yeah. and you'll be the only person ah. that really knows you didn't. And then everyone- sideways glances. M- most people do the, I don't looks. care, I have my own personal code, and there's no way, and I go, what about the Christmas party? <laughs> and they go, you walk into that Christmas party and everybody's looking at Fox. you. And uh, usually they then then now here's how I know I've gotten I've gotten them broken. Can I drink? <laughs> when they start wanting yeah. to know if so they can, the other conditions. they can mule in their how own booze. How aware do I have to be? Yeah, in the moment, you have a couple of shots, okay. something to take the edge off. Fuck. Yeah, picturing that dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It. it I, I have a little bit of a migraine just thinking about it. I. It would the obvious thing would be to go, well, yeah, have sex with them. Who cares? That, I, most guys, because they're insanely pragmatic, would go, I'll just fuck them once yeah. and then that's it. Moving yeah. on. Yeah. I don't have to worry about the Christmas thing. I don't have to worry about the company picnic. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about the retreat where right. everyone's looking at us. You get, you get a raise, you get a promotion, everyone thinks that, that that's why. Right. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> that said. That's the thing. If I was the one who knew and nobody else knew, I would start being awkward around that person. I would shudder deeper. I would feel worse. Yeah, but that guy would never go, you know, Gina's acting a little strange around me. I bet you it's because she thinks I fucked her. Yeah, is it, is it because we might have had sex? <laughs> the, I don't know it, of course, but I bet that's what she's thinking. That's, it sure seems like that. The signal she's giving off. Yeah. It was like that scene in Face Off where he went to go visit his brother in prison. And he's like, yeah? Something's off about you. What was mom's maiden name and sis's favorite f- favorite dessert? Uh-huh. And it was like, wait a minute. The brother's suspicious that his brother's not his brother? Yeah. Do you ever get that way with your brother or your no, sister? It would never happen. happen. It would never happen. See, that would never happen. Can I tell you why I'd have sex with him? Yeah. Because people don't forget. Mm-hmm. And no matter which radio station I went to, which job I went to, mm-hmm. they'd always go, oh, Gina Grad, she's the one that fucked so-and-so. Right. That would be their way of bonding when they reunited walking on the street. That's right. And I can't have that. Smart, pragmatic, and uh, career-oriented. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Take one for the team. First, I'll tell you about blinds galore. First place to buy custom blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, online, family-owned and run, mother-daughter duo for over 20 years, over 2 million windows covered. I have them in my house. I got the in the studio. We have them in the edit bays. And um, you, can, uh, you can take the measurements yourself, and the blinds galore has a build-a-blind tool, help you find exactly how it looks on screen before you buy, so you can mock it up and make sure it's how you want it. Save a ton compared to the big box stores. Falls here, winter's right around the corner. It's going to get cold, so keep that cold out. Don't let it creep in. Insulate your windows with stylish cellular shades or drapery panels. Even connect your shades to your smartphone or Amazon so they're electric. And you don't have to hardwire them. You just charge them up like once a year and operate the whole thing from your phone. It's Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? Blinds Galore makes it easy to get the safe, high-quality designer blinds and shades you've always wanted in your home, all at a great price, all at up to 45% off. See for yourself at BlindsGalore.com and let them know that Adam sent you. That's BlindsGalore.com. First, there's LifeLock. Fraudsters posing as IRS agents, police officers, or power companies are tricking victims into sending online gift cards or reading gift card numbers over the phone as payment. It's important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft are affecting our lives. Every day we put our info at risk on the Internet, 
In an instant, cyber criminals could harm your finances, credit, and your reputation. Good thing there's LifeLock. LifeLock helps detect a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web. If they detect your information has potentially been compromised, they will send you an alert. Protect yourself with LifeLock. Right, Dawson? No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But you can keep what's yours with LifeLock by Norton. Join now and save up to 25% off your first year by using promo code ADAM. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head to LifeLock.com and use promo code ADAM for 25% off. All right, Gio, same hypothetical question. Go. Uh, I don't have a significant other, so it's just me sleeping with my mom. <laughs> Answer the question. I guess no. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, this that, that rivals Adam's hypothetical question for The Office, which uh, they went over with Gina, and her answer was quite hilarious. Yeah. Well, I always love some Q&As, and of course, a little beach story from Adam. All right, we have one more clip for everybody, and we're going to take it back to January of 2014. What was happening around then? Well, Adam was working on a documentary, The Raising Life of Paul Newman, and he talks a little bit about that, and what else? Uh, they just secured the interview with Robert Redford, and he has some funny riffing as if uh, they're good friends, and they're starting the campaign to ask Tom Cruise to appear in it, which I don't think ever actually got to Tom, unfortunately. I think he would have done it. This is Adam Carolla Show 1236, featuring Rob Delaney, not in this portion, Dr. Bruce, Allison Rosen, and Brian Bishop. It's from January of 2014. It's just a really fun show opening, and Adam talks about being scooted along and how much he doesn't appreciate that. Check it out. Rosen. Hello, Adam Carolla. And Bald Brian. <laughs> that was Ryan Fitzgibbons who wanted that on Twitter with the hashtag, of course, tro- top drop. Ah, uh, Dr. Spaz. Huh? Good to see you, my friend. Good to be here. Uh, Dr. Spaz, I uh, was delighted, came over the house uh, quite a few times. Felt like eight or nine times, or probably only two times over the Christmas break. Did I tell you what a lovely job Lynette's done with that house? She's done a fantastic job with that house. <laughs> She did the uh, Dr. Drew and his kids are coming by about 3 o'clock and then we're all going to go out to Pasadena and uh, get something to eat and walk the dog and have a good old time. And uh, sure enough, at 2.58, Dr. Bruce was here, but at 5 o'clock, Dr. Bruce was still in the house and I had to scooch him along. Never... uh, The Sandman came out. I do a lot of scooching along, much more scooching along than I ever thought I would have to do as an adult. Uh, A lot of, well, what time is it? Woo, it's getting dark. Boy, if you guys are going to take the dog for a walk and uh, get something to eat, (laughs) guess you better get moving about now. We had a nice time. The streetlights are almost on. No wonder I'm tired. (laughs) Could feel him start to heat up the filament. Less Dr. Bruce in your immediate vicinity. Uh, you know, part of uh, my stay at home vacation uh-huh. is not staying at home with a bunch of people <laughs> other than me. You see what I'm saying? Oh my! God. His Bruce quotient was filled. Uh, that's right. As opposed to wanting Bruce out, he stopped over on the way to Sacramento. Yes. And mercifully, not on the way back. By the way, how many times did you hear this from me on your way out to Sacramento? Geez, that's a six-hour ride. You better uh, – she's going to leave now. You'll still be there after midnight. Doing so. a lot of construction on the grapevine. Yeah. yeah. How about an anecdote, an Adam anecdote here? Like uh, when I did Loveline, I had to be back in L.A. the next morning, and I, I sort of hinted, maybe I'd stay at your house. It's like 12 years ago or longer. And he's like, well, you know, um, Lynette uh, really doesn't like people staying at the house. She doesn't like gingers. Yeah. I, I think that was someone else. Freaks that, her out. That, that, <laughs> so part of the support – for Lynette calling you an Asperger's. You don't like anything out of the play. The way it should be, it has to be just the way it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Super so, particular. Yeah, I wasn't there eight or nine times, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. I know, no. I said it felt like it. Oh, excuse It felt me. like it. You're only there twice, but it felt like eight or nine visits. Oh. You know what I mean? All right. Um, you know, like when a guy has you know like, like some sort of medical rectal probe or something they go it felt like the guy was force feeding a fire truck up there it was really you know yeah, nothing wider a than a pencil but that's what it mm. felt like i resent your train of thought going right Thank to the you. rectal probe speaking of train that's what it felt like going up my ass <laughs> bruce should come with a sign they have like on gas pumps like do not top off <laughs> <laughs> dr spaz is here he's gonna do a little uh medical report i got stuff to complain about oh wait do i have stuff to complain about 
First, I think just to put me in a good mood, um, you can go to AdamCarolla.com if you want to see the picture of um, – who am I trying to think of? Oh, yeah. There's uh, Robert Redford. We went out and got Robert Redford for our Paul Newman show. And, uh, Was there one day back east? Yeah. A uh, real nice sort of candid shot of what the setup, what the interview looks like, and uh, what uh, <clears throat> Bobby R. looks like. <laughs> I now call him uh, sitting there back east uh, talking about uh, Newman. So uh, that was very generous of him. He read. And, Bread. Right. And uh, I just thought it'd be fun for you guys to see a little, wow. uh, little behind-the-scenes shot of uh, the Robert Redford. Yeah, we're still trying to book uh, Tom Cruise. So uh, if you could uh, give us a hand with that, that would be uh, awesome. What's it save there? Let's see. Ah, book Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's the Twitter campaign. Try and do it. So if you know him or you can get to him or you got someone, you can uh, retweet. But I don't know what you're tweeting. Does it say well, it you up can, there? There's, tw- there's tweets you've sent before that you can retweet, or you can just at mention Tom Cruise and use the hashtag book Tom and try to encourage him to be Oh, okay. The- Does it say that anywhere up there? Oh, it says retweet. Yeah. Your Get tweet. Tom Cruise. Right. All right. But yeah, just give me the business, uh, Gary. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll lay out the plan. Just need a Scientology connection. Um, thanks, Dick. <laughs> now, where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Don't say that. I uh, I was I don't know why I was sitting here with Dr. Drew uh, today going down uh, memory lane and that something jumped in my mind uh, er, during the break. Everyone tweeted me this new study that came out about secondhand smoke. And I've been the guy who always said, look, I'm not saying it's good for you, but it, it can't be 50,000 people dying every year of secondhand smoke. It would show up on autopsies and things like that because of death. They're, they're, so you would know somebody who died of secondhand smoke if this was true. Car accidents. We all know someone whose child or themselves or a friend of a friend who got into a bad car accident or possibly died in a car accident. But we don't know anyone who's ever died of secondhand smoke. And people kept tweeting me this article, and Dr. Spaz has it. And we touched on it earlier in the week, and he can just hit uh, a bullet point or two. Basically, seventy. it was a study by, in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, <clears throat> and it was 76,000 women over more than a decade. And – other than a link between smoking and cancer, which we knew, they showed there really wasn't any link. Even in women that had lived with a smoker for over 30 years, they, it really wasn't statistically significant. The, the uh, rates of cancer were not increased. So, But if you follow okay. the dollar. Thank you. Okay. Now, <laughs> I hearken back to an argument I had. Bald Brian may remember it with uh, Barry Groveman because he was the mayor of Calabasas at the time. Ah, I was still and screening calls for the for the radio show. At he that point. was going to call in and he was going to he wanted to outlaw smoking in parks in Calabasas. And again, I'm not the guy who says smoking in parks is good. You love smoking in parks. You like to blow it into a baby's face. I have never smoked a cigarette in a park in Calabasas or anywhere else. But I do like civil liberties. And I do understand that chicken shit, nothing laws don't help. We have many bigger fish to fry. And I'll tell you this. I'll, tell you, I'll make you this. Calabasas is sort of a suburb of Los Angeles. A nice one. When all the potholes are fixed and all the schools are fixed and all the crime is fixed, then we can focus on the secondhand smoke coming from the parks in Calabasas. That, that's the way I prefer to work, and that's the way I want our leadership working. If I have a football coach and our offensive line is a sieve to the point where our quarterback can't even work out of the shotgun and get a screen pass off, I don't want to be working on special teams and end arounds and trick plays. I want to shore up the offensive line. This is give called our, a flea flicker. Yes. I want to give our quarterback three seconds to throw a pass, and then we can start working on the reverse on the kickoff. That's the way I work in, in life. And it's certainly the way I'd like our politicians to work. But anyway, he called in to my radio show back in 06. Early 06. Early 06. And we had a little debate about secondhand smoke and if it was a first-rate killer or not. Um, Here's uh, what he had to say. This is another politician locking antlers with the ace man from uh, way back in 06. The question is, do you, do we accept 
the public health implications of secondhand smoke, which are now, in 2006, mm -hmm. irrefutable. Yes. And you have to be able to also acknowledge that two weeks after we passed this, the State of California Air Resources Board, in an unprecedented step, listed secondhand smoke as a dangerous air contaminant yes. and indicated that their reasons for doing that was because the 800 studies and all the leading experts provided information that was irrefutable that this is one of the leading causes of preventable death. Yes, so the secondhand expert, smoke. That's right. That's complete nonsense, obviously. How do you know that? I, because stop I'll it, tell you, stop I'll tell it. It's, it's the <laughs> number one or number two preventable cause a cause of preventable deaths? Bruce is shaking his head. It's <laughs> astounding. I mean, it's, it's astounding, but, right? Now, is he stupid or is he a liar? He's a politician. Okay. They're both. They're okay. So both. But you guys hear what we're saying? This is 06, and you're going, we have scientists, all the data, all the facts, all the everything. Right. Except for not so much. All right. it, it's in, insane. And by the way, this is why all you idiots should nod your head when these assholes talk. You should respond like I just did, which is you're fucking idiot. Which I would have said if we were on this podcast instead of just said he was wrong. So why, why, Bruce, why were we, I remember as a child, I was told secondhand smoke is a first statistic. Hit, first it's lying through statistics. And what were the statistics was, that, that led to the There lies? weren't any statistics. Well. It was, we don't want you to smoke. That was, we, we're on it. We know what's best for you. Right, but in and we're on a journey of happiness where you don't smoke. Right. In the article you gave me, same there, with AIDS as an equal opportunity killer. Yeah, there was something called Flight Attendant Medical Research Institute, which received three hundred million dollars after sixty thousand flight attendants sued. So you follow the dollar. That's the other. They're place going that, to. Oh, but by the way, uh, Barry's not governing over Calabasas anymore. He's now an attorney in a Beverly Hills law firm. Oh. So he landed on his feet, <laughs> and a perfect right. gig for him, right? On his reptilian stuff. Yeah, all right. Rewind it uh, just a beat and a half. studies and all the leading experts provided information that was irrefutable that this is one of the leading causes of preventable death. Yes. So yes. Secondhand smoke. That's right. That's complete nonsense, obviously. How do you know that? I, because I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. What's I your background? Stop it. Stop it. Years. Fuck you. <laughs> What's your background? Are you a science? Did you go to Yale? Do you have Did you a go to Harvard? Brain? Yeah, do you have, yeah, they always want to know what my background is. Yes. They know... I, I'm not a, a pulmonologist who went to Harvard. That they know. So they can say that. What's your background? How do I know? What's your background? I, because I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. I worked with a doctor for 10 years, and I used to pass the billboards that Rob Reiner put up that said 55,000 Americans die every year of secondhand smoke. Well, the doctor, Dr. Drew, bought, brought in an article from JAMA one day that suggests as many as seven people may have died nationally last year of secondhand smoke. And I would just ask everyone, close your eyes, think about the famous actor, the relative, the loved one, the neighbor, the classmate that has passed away because of secondhand smoke smoke hold on let's just wait a second you do the same thing mayor everyone close your eyes everyone close your eyes now picture yourself watching the news the great actor the great musician Adam. the politician hold on the family member the school teacher the cousin the brother the sister the neighbor close your eyes who's been snatched away prematurely by secondhand smoke Adam, first hold of on give it a thought okay do you have anybody you know uh, probably Dana Reeve is one we can start with. Oh, and that's I would, right. I would also point out, like, and if we have time, Christopher Reeve. That lung husband. cancer was not related to cigarette smoke, anyway. So, but she did work at a cabaret for several months. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Where it's people smoked. <laughs> what kind of cancer did she have? She had lung cancer. Oh, yeah, wow. there are many different cell. Types. People are allowed to die of lung cancer. Yeah. Who didn't? Did Christopher Reeve smoke? No. Is that why he fell off that horse? Did the, the horse, horse die? Smoke. Of horse smoke. Smoke? <laughs> big, big, uh, big, big uh, Winston in each nostril. <laughs> All right. So Dana Reeves, he knows, died of secondhand smoke, although she didn't. She just died of lung cancer. Why she, as, as a person who was married to someone who didn't smoke, how could you possibly make that correlation? Wasn't a flight attendant. And she worked at cabarets was his excuse, I remember, at the time. All right, again, these are politicians with statistics, everybody. Shall we listen to them? All right, smart not to listen to them in 2006. Shall we be listening in 2014 is my question. They're the same guys. All right, play on. 
Probably Dana Reeve is one we can start with. Oh, and that's I would, right. I would also point, and I can, if we have time, I'm happy to get into that. There's also an Do you know Dana Reeve? There's an extraordinary rise. I'll, I'll answer that one, one second. Yes. There's an extraordinary rise in asthma in kids. And, and here's the really the question. <laughs> that's right, because they're home. If I get a chance to finish. Go you know, ahead. You talk to All right, so you ago. came up with Dana Reeve. That's the only one you came Let up me, with. Adam, and, and, if I could. But can I ask you this? You can't shout over it. Can I ask you, you this? Really can I ask you a question about Dana Reeve? Does it say on her death certificate secondhand smoke? If you'll let me answer the question. First of all, I respect where you're coming from. All right. It's, it's interesting that while I was waiting, your discussion was all about respect. All I'm saying is that, uh, first of all, what, the chief physician, the chief clinical oncologist at uh, Cleveland Cancer Institute discussed issues like Dana Reeve when he pointed out that cigarette smokers have lesser risk than non-smokers. And the reason is that when you breathe from a hot plume of... Cigarette smokers have a wow. lesser risk than the non-smoker. Yeah. As Dr. Drew pointed out, isn't the person who's smoking the cigarette in the room with the secondhand smoke as well? So they're getting first and You smoke then- your cigarettes your way. <laughs> we'll smoke our cigarettes and ours. Can I, and I can I say one thing? He said that the rise of asthma, but that makes no sense as something related to secondhand smoke because the number of people smoking has been going down. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want to know, I said, is there anyone you know who's died of secondhand smoke? You know. Do you know anybody? He didn't. I don't know. So anyway, we'll let it go. Keep going. Uh, we have, Smokers uh, have lesser risk than non-smokers. And the reason is that when you breathe from a hot plume of a cigarette, the heat causes a reflex in the lung and you cough, preventing the smoke from going very deep. <laughs> that hap- Every time you take a drag off a cigarette, you cough? So and secondhand so smoke go... is worse than firsthand smoke. But you see, this is just good science, people. Oh, my God. Just good science. First, what day did you learn this in medical school? <laughs> what, First what? or second? First or second yeah, day. Right. By the way, he's going to make an awesome attorney, right? Fucking awesome. All right. What else we got? of whether we agree on whether the extraordinary rise in asthma among kids is related to secondhand smoke. We don't have to get to that. Of course it isn't. People used to smoke more, for Fine, Christ's sake. Let me, let me ask so you how do you do that math? Well, if I could talk for one Half second. the country smoked and none of the kids had asthma. So uh, how do you do the math? Do, the question is this. Please. This is what our ordinance is aimed at. Yes. Regardless of what caused it, we still have a lot of kids and a lot of folks in society that are hypersensitive to smoke. Yes. Don't they have a right to go to public buildings and stand outside? Well, I I'm glad. Of course they do. Right. Of course they do. And, and, and that's why, it, it, first off, people standing 20 feet away from you smoking doesn't make a difference. It's How not going to cause that? asthma. You're not, you're not a scientist. How do you, what's Hold on. This is their Tell me fucking sh- bullshit <laughs> argument all the time. You're not a scientist. No, I'm a human he? being. I understand. I've stood 20 feet away from people who smoke. My eyes didn't start watering and start hacking. All right, you're not a scientist. So they rely so heavily on their scientists and then announcing you're not a scientist. All right. How do I know? Okay. Tell me what you're fucking liar. Go ahead. Tell me what you're I, I have eyeballs and ears. I see what goes on. Well, I'd rather take the scientist because on public health, it's People better used to, to be smoke safe. on airplanes and kids didn't have Adam, asthma. Adam, it's yes. better to be safe than sorry. All you right, but that. listen, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So asthma is on the rise, but smoking is on the decline. So he wants to get rid of smoking so we can get rid of asthma. I would argue that if we started smoking more, we could shrink asthma again. I mean, if you're just looking at it like a chart. Well, it's healthy for the smokers. In 1950, 2 percent of the kids had asthma and 50 percent of the people smoked. Now, 18 percent of the people smoke and 14 percent of the kids have asthma. Let's do the math, right, man. It's secondhand fresh air. Fucking retarded. If he could get everyone to be a smoker, he could eliminate secondhand smoke. That's and right. All we'll all be healthy. I'll be first-hand That's right. smokers. All right. Do we have uh, we got one more? By way of symbols in this discussion, I think I've made the point that I stand <laughs> with the symbols of public health. I just asked you why more people have asthma now that less people smoke, and you can't answer that. So I don't think you because made your point I at all. That, I think people are, smo- are, are exposed to, well, there's a lot of factors, but secondhand smoke is clearly one of them. Yeah, no. it's, it's, it's clearly, what, it's at the bottom of the list. Why wouldn't we as a society... Give me a number. How many people die? Steps. How many people die each year of secondhand smoke? Give me I, your number. 
I can only tell you that the uh, one of the directors of the American Heart Association, who testified before us in the hearings, yes. told us this ordinance was going to save thousands and thousands of lives. <laughs> Just in Calabasas? <laughs> no, because of but, but because of the Damn secondary it, goal. I mean, the, this the, to tell people that they can't smoke outside right. ultimately will get people to stop smoking cigarettes. Right. That's what will save lives. Yeah, but, you but know, in possibly. all fairness, uh, listen, I don't argue that there is a relationship between the overall habit and the problem. All right. Well, there he is. Another idiot fucking politician making a nonsensical point. And aren't you glad 2006 now we're living in utopia now because you can't smoke at a park in Calabasas. This is what these ass wipes do all day. And then they have panels and sub panels and experts and arguments and lawyers and the scientists and what? Does that fill the fucking potholes or help the schools? Fucking idiots. All right. Let me tell you this. All right. I'm not done. I'm not can I, done. Can I ask Bruce a related question? Yes. Because I obviously secondhand smoke, people don't die of that. No one's get you know, asphyxiates from secondhand smoke or whatever. Does it cause things that can kill you, or is that too like? No, there's no. They they haven't found any correlation with anything that I'm aware of. Other than wow. there's still it, even after studies like this, they pointed out in the article Adam gave me Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They're still calculating secondhand smoke responsible for 46,000 heart disease deaths and 3,400 deaths from cancer. So it's. That's what they think? or uh, No, they're still saying that even though there's oh. really oh. – this is where you say, oh, the scientists say it's – So because they've already established that number, it's hard to go back and erase right. it kind of? Uh. Well, but, but Brian, you're perfect because you're the right age to be indoctrinated right. yeah, into kid, what essentially is, is a lie. It's not a, it's not a bad lie. It's a lie to stop you from smoking, but it's just a lie. And then it, you get fed it over and over again. And then you start yeah. spouting it out. And now you become a little soldier for and the it, lie. Intuitively, it does kind of make sense. You're like, Oh, second half smoke. When people smoke, it smells. It always stays on your clothes. Uh, my eyes kind of water. It itches my throat. Yeah. I can they see that. I can third, see that could, that could kill you if you're around that every third, day. They had third hand smoke going a few years ago. I like that better. I like that one better too. All right, so we got that. And a fourth couple, hand smoke, you pass a 7 Eleven. A couple other uh, <laughs> quick stories to uh, share with you. Um, first off, quickly, the spoils of Babylon. Ah, Eric John Rosh's epic novel is now an epic miniseries coming to IFC tonight. That's right, January 9th. Six part miniseries featuring big names Kristen Wiig. Toby McGuire, Will Fowler, we talked about this. Very funny stuff. Jessica Alba, Val Kilmer, just to name a few. Tonight's premiere includes two back-to-back episodes. If you like comedy, if you like to laugh. The Spoils of Babylon. The Spoils of Babylon. IFC tonight, January 9th, 10 p.m. All right, so uh, somebody else tweeted me out something that was uh, basically law enforcement and petty crimes and blah, blah, blah. It's, uh, L.A. has uh, raised their um, infraction for jaywalking to $197. No. Yes. It's a $200 ticket? A $200. Well, I don't know if they charge tax or how it works, but yes. By the way. Oh, there's a convenience fee. It ends up being line. more. Yeah. Don't give me the 197 cocksuckers. Just charge me 200 Stop pretending like you thought about it. Right. If you say two, if you say two hundred, it's as if you're just being arbitrary about it and trying to gouge people. If you say one ninety seven, again, it's like if a plumber says five hundred bucks to snake the drain drain out, but if he goes four eighty seven eighty one, it's like oh okay, he must oh, know something. Parts must have cost. Yeah, something football in there. penalty should work the same way. That's right. Personal foul, fourteen and eh, third of a yard. That's right. You know what doesn't make sense? Somebody did a study. Walking in the crosswalks actually more dangerous. Than ah, that. but doesn't raise more money. All right. So uh, we're worried about secondhand smoke. We're worried about uh, raising raising money for uh, jaywalkers. Uh, Allison has one that uh, made me want to fucking vomit because I can't stand these uh, stories. It is uh, the the newest class of recruits for the L.A. Fire Department. Uh, Eric Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles, is not happy about the ethnic and sex uh, sexual breakup, gender breakup. Of this, it is uh, well. It's interesting. You can read a couple of the beats there, Alison, well, if you have it. Mayor Garcetti thinks these numbers are unacceptable and wants the fire department to reflect the city it serves. Los Angeles is twenty nine percent white, forty nine percent Latino, eleven percent Asian, and ten percent black. By the way, when if Latino is fifty percent and we're thirty percent, when when do we get to be a minority? Mm. When do they get to be called? 
minority. And when it comes to life-saving jobs, who cares what – whatever. Who cares okay. What the well, let's just, let's just lay it out. Percentages it's, are. Oh, no. This is upsetting. Go so ahead. the department, which has 3,200 sworn personnel, has diver- diversified its ranks over the last two decades, so oh, the officials cr- say. The right. last four fire chiefs have been African American, but the agency. Oh, hold on! As a white person, I'm outraged. Chiefs. I'm outraged. <laughs> By the way, the fire chief should always be American Indian, shouldn't he? Hey, chief. <laughs> How you doing, chief? Good chief. Any fire, water, chief? You know what I mean? Don't you want the plural of chiefs to be chiefs? It should be like your butler. <laughs> um, the agency is still 50% white, 31% Latino, 12% black, and 7% Asian. Okay. And is anyone bothered by this? And by, by the way. I am outraged and I find it unacceptable. Do, do we need more women firefighters? I have well, taken. Well, women are just 3%. I have taken the physical test to be a fireman. And I, can t- I could not pass when I was 26 and in fantastic shape because my hand strength wasn't good enough to do this grip where I have to lift this 50-pound weight on this pulley. And you have to lean over this line, blah, blah, blah. All I'm saying is, is if this place went up in flames and someone had to carry... Gary's big ass out of here and the porcelain <laughs> punisher's big ass. I don't know a female who could do that. Yeah, on the flip side, if someone does come and extinguish your burning house and carry out your children or you or your pets or all of them, are you going to be upset that it's not diverse enough? Garcetti or? would be very upset that it does not represent this city. Well, again, isn't that just politicians saying the politically correct thing? Yes, but who gives a fuck? Do your work. We don't give a shit. Bigger fist to fry. Is there more there, or can I can I see that thing? Because there's something that was bothering me on that report. I don't know if we highlighted the right. Oh, super small print. Oh, there's second page. Oh, well, this is just some more more stats. Oh, okay. So the the do, do we have sorry, the? Here's the first page. Ah, the first page. Well, that, oh, maybe that's what I wanted. Read read the first page. Let's see if we can get that. Uh, the first new Los Angeles Fire Department recruit class in five years is nearly all male and mostly white, despite all male promises by the agency to diversify its promises. ranks. Promises. What does that shit cost us, by the way? You, you know what it. What's a conversation cost? Just that stupid conversation. We promise to get more women and whatever Eskimos in here. It. Uh, speaking of diversity in the city, anyone checked out the TSA at LAX? A lot of white folks out there. Quite diverse, I would say. <laughs> yeah, there's black, black, and blacker. <laughs> it's fine. They do a good job. Good enough. Is, are you upset that they're not representing our city? Because you need to see you everywhere? I, it'd be nice, but... It, uh, it's insane. You know, it, this is called racism, by the way. You needing mm, one of you everywhere to well, rescue somebody or to work at TSA or to do whatever. Oh, well, the last, the last four fire chiefs were black, but never mind. Mm. What do you mean, never mind? That seems pretty it's a yeah. pretty good run of black dudes. The manager, dudes. the commissioner is like, oh, that seems pretty good, seems doesn't pretty- it? Considering they're what, 13% or whatever of uh, L.A.? Not a bad not a bad statistically a group that's 13% for last four fire chiefs not too bad you know what's going to upset you more is that this this directive from the mayor they're going to have to hire a very expensive uh, marketing firm to figure out how could do research how to market it to women and I say hey, women you can be uh, firefighters or get more minorities involved and not right. that but that it's going to cost so much money to come up with this plan this right. strategic research there's a part of the stat that i'm enamored with though if you read on Allison, sorry the class of 70 firefighters, which is scheduled to begin training Monday, has just one woman and is 60% white. 23% of the recruits are Latino, 11% are Asian American, and 6% are African American. But a couple things. As I've said, are we not allowed to gravitate towards certain professions, certain cultures? Certain cultures are good with hair and nails. Some are good with security. Some are good with fire. Some are good with law enforcement. Some are good with accounting. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of Eastern Indian doctors. Is that okay? Or do we need to fix that? Uh, what, what's going on? Why do we have to fix you know, everything what? all the time? Here's what I love about the Asians. 11% of the recruits of the new class were Asian, right? Yes. Samoans. Does anyone know what percentage of Los Angeles is Asian? I'm going to guess right around 11%. 11%. These fucking people never fail when it comes to math. (laughs) They never fail. They never fail. 11%. It's such a random number. It's 11% and uh, exactly 11%. They hit it on the fucking nail. That's why they're kicking the shit out of us, ladies and gentlemen. Work that abacus. 
Okay. So uh, Garcetti's upset. <coughs> He's going to look into this. He's yeah. going to hire somebody to look into it. It needs to be looked into because uh, – can I ask you this? How big a deal is the fire department these days anyway? Uh, I mean, back in the day, we didn't have codes. We didn't have pneumatic door closers and burn ratings. We had all this old tube and wire. You know, that just you, you take a look at the wiring of an old mm-hmm. house. It's a fucking tinderbox well, waiting, is, waiting is, to go up. This is where you lose me, maybe. No. The fire department. Who do you, okay. Who, who in 2014 fires? Fires in high rises. Fires on your street. Fires in neighboring buildings. How many fi, uh, uh, as opposed to 50 years ago? I mean, well, you know, 150 years ago, lanterns were like falling over. Less, oh, of yeah. course they are. There's codes and the electrical, just the idea of having an old style fuse box versus a breaker box. There's so much stuff is like electrical code and stuff like that. There's so there's sprinklers that have to be installed if you're building a house up in the hills and so on and so forth. The building code commercially is insane yep. when it comes to this. I mean, doesn't it feel like there are fire trucks going by all the time well, though? And I always wonder when there's like four screaming fire trucks heading by. Are I have this this thought about you know are there how like are they headed to an actual fire? Because no, you never no, hear about the fire. No, it's, it's somebody who's having a heart attack. Yeah. I think but, I, I just want to know just anecdotally on your street. Friends, people you know, or just turning on the news and saying there's a high rise ablaze in downtown L.A. When's the last time we heard high rise ablaze downtown L.A.? Vegas casino goes up. You know, oh, my neighbor, not my neighbor, but one neighbor over's house burnt to the ground no, you hear six about months ago. Forest fires because of the wind, but not any houses right. getting damaged. Well, so maybe we don't need so many firemen. But would you rather have a male or female come through the door? If you and your kids were trapped in your house, I would go for a male. I would. Now you go, well, what about a female that was equally qualified? That's fine. But in order to get Garcetti's numbers the way he wants them, yeah. he's going to have to adjust the test. And the females can't pass the 50-pound hose step test. So we're going to have to bring it to a 30-pound hose step test so we can get more women in here, which doesn't help you when your fucking house is on fire. No. All right. Do anyway. the strongest possible person who will probably be a male. Right. Whoa, who evidently is because that's what it is. Yeah. They are aggressively trying to attract women, blacks, and Latinos. It seems like white guys like fighting fires. Are we okay with that? Okay. Yeah, whoever wants to do it, come yeah. on down. Come on yeah. down. Take the test. That's my point. All right. Uh, play the uh, – now, this is all, by the way, somebody tweeted me this – Today And it's just a nice capper to what I've been complaining about. This is uh, the L.A. Times, who uh, leans a little toward the left. But uh, you can hear with their a little assessment of uh, L.A. on the decline. And let's just give you a little listen. A new report released today says L.A. suffers from a crisis of leadership and direction, among other problems. The Los Angeles 2020 Commission, a 13-member citizen panel convened by City Council President Herb Wesson, reports that the city is also weighed down by problems such as traffic and poverty. The Times reports that the panel, chaired by former Commerce Secretary Mickey Cantor, said L.A. lacks a coherent approach to economic development and trails other major cities in job growth. The report is titled, A Time for Truth. It notes that city government spending is growing faster than revenue and that the pension benefits of city employees are at risk. Additionally, the report cautions that the Los Angeles Unified School District is, quote, failing our children and that the city is under investing in the harbor and airport and the Department of Water and Power. Mayor Eric Garcetti said he welcomed the commission's ideas. Later this year, the panel is expected to offer proposed solutions to the problems it sees. For more, visit LATimes.com and All right. Tough, we tough love. We couldn't trim it. Okay. Oh, then you can stop it. The point is this. Um, all right. So secondhand smoke and jaywalkers and the fire department not having enough ethnic balance for you, enough diversity. Maybe we can get to that stuff when we're done with the harbor and we're done with the airport and we're done with the schools and we're done with the lack of jobs and the poverty and the freeway and the congestion. Shall, <laughs> shall we do that? Or do you just want to be outraged by what's going on in the fire department? Are all these politicians just insane bullshit artists or what, what are they yes. doing? I mean, I know Gavin Newsom sat here and said he liked to work small to big. Maybe this is what we're talking about. Maybe when we get this diversity thing sorted out in the fire department, <laughs> then we can move on to the school system. <laughs> yes? But once again, the Asians... 
fucking nailing it at 11 percent. There's probably one Asian recruit, maybe Bong Lo Su, was going to <laughs> was going to graduate, and another Asian guy like grabbed his arm and went, "You got to take one for the fucking team." <laughs> Why? Because if you walk across there and throw that fucking hat up in the air, you're going to put us at fourteen percent. That's going to fuck the curve up. That's been my dream to be a firefighter. You don't understand. A young rooster. We're perfect mathematically. All right, fair enough. You get but a, I'm not happy about it. Get to the salon with your mom and push those cuticles. <laughs> And that was Adam talking about uh, campaigning to get Mr. Tom Cruise in the documentary. Spoiler alert, he was not involved. And uh, and we can see. I mean, Adam still has like... Adam owns his racing helmet. Yeah, Adam got his helmet and a couple of his uh, paraphernalia. So there you go. All right, that'll do it for Corolla Classics today. We'll be back tomorrow with our Sunday show. So, so make sure to subscribe to the Corolla Classics feed to get our special Sunday shows. We'll see you there. My name's Chris Loxamana. That's super fan Giovanni. Mahalo and get it on. Hey, Geico, do you own? Do you rent? Well, you do one or the other, right? You know, it's hard work out there. Owning, renting. You want to save some money? How about your bundle? Bundle your policies at Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle the homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you got so much to do already. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. See just how much you could save at Geico. That is Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. First, I'll tell you about Blinds Galore. First place to buy custom blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, online, family-owned and run, mother-daughter duo for over 20 years, over 2 million windows covered. I have them in my house. I got the in the studio. We have them in the edit bays. And um, you, can, uh, you can take the measurements yourself, and uh, Blinds Galore has a build-a-blind tool, help you find exactly how it looks on screen before you buy, so you can mock it up and make sure it's how you want it. Save a ton compared to the big box stores. Falls here, winter's right around the corner. It's going to get cold, so keep that cold out. Don't let it creep in. Insulate your windows with stylish cellular shades or drapery panels. Even connect your shades to your smartphone or Amazon so they're electric. And you don't have to hardwire them. You just charge them up like once a year and operate the whole thing from your phone. It's Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? Blinds Galore makes it easy to get the safe, high-quality designer blinds and shades you've always wanted in your home, all at a great price, all at up to 45% off. See for yourself at BlindsGalore.com and let them know that Adam sent you. That's BlindsGalore.com.